Earplugs. I have a life bond relationship with earplugs, right? Because since like the age of eight or nine, uh, I've been playing the drums. My previous profession before doing this was as a professional drummer. And I've always protected my ears, always. And it's about time I talked about some hearing protection because you know, in order to get the most out of your music listening, you know, you gotta look after these guys. And mate, when you go to old mate dad and go, dad, I need some earplugs so I can be a noisy boy. No doubt, dad will reach for one of these because more likely he's got a big bag of these in the shed. Well, that was the case for me. And you're about to see like, there are a lot of different earplug types and they're all specialists in their little fields. And these are the hardcore variety. The way they work is you screw them up like this and then you push it into your ear and then you hold it there and you let it expand to the shape of your greasy head. These block out just about the most. It's just this huge barrier for noise to get into. So you're probably thinking, well, mate, then that means these are the best then. Well, I mean, you're about to learn not in every application. A, a problem is these get really gross like very gross like these are disposable the reason why they come in giant bagfuls of them because you're going to be chucking them left right and center so the musicians out there who are like well what are some good reusable earplugs then i mean you know the most hardcore way you can go is to get custom molds like that's top tier that is your ear they fit no one else they're just not that cheap it is cool that you can also form them into like headphones. Like, there you go, best fitting headphones on the planet. But again, very expensive. Uh, but check with your workplace, because if earplugs are a very important thing, they might be responsible in supplying those for you. You know, just a little top tip there for you. But honestly, if you're a musician, the ones I recommend are the like little Christmas tree looking ones. Look, here's some for motorbikes. Yes, earplugs get that specific. The whole thing's squishy. It doesn't have a backbone per se, but that's because helmets push up against your ear. Is, right and if you've got big hard stems sticking out it's really uncomfortable and this little dingus is so you can get them out of your head nothing worse than having an earplug stuck in your ear let me tell you but i love the christmas tree style ones as a musician because they're tapered meaning you can dial them in so if i was playing a jazz gig i'd have them just sitting in there if i was playing like a big powerhouse rock gig i'd have them so far down my head but yeah they're the reusables i recommend hey you just leave them in the in the pocket of your shirt and send them through the wash boom they're clean now but there is like a downside to these style of earplugs though and that is that you gotta stuff them right down the back of your head so yeah, they block out a lot of noise, but then the problem is like earwax. Earwax is weird. It's almost like water when it's inside your ear, but when it leaves and cools down, it turns into like this disgusting resin. So these can be pushing wax right down the back of your head. And it's just this slow build up. Like I remember years ago, because you know, I've been wearing earplugs for like my whole life, basically. I went to the doctor. I was like, man, everything's a bit muffled lately. He looked in my ear and he laughed. Doctors see a lot of stuff. I mean, and like, if he laughs at your ears, like, let me tell you, when he gave me that full rinse out, the stuff that came out was awe-inspiring. It was like, it was that kind of like super gross, but then super amazing. And all of a sudden I could hear in stereo. And it was because earplugs like this, they just slowly smash it down there. You know, it doesn't happen in one day. It's like, you know, month two of wearing earplugs all the time. But you could consider these silicone ones. So the idea with these is that you smush them around your ear. So it doesn't go into your ear, it goes around it. It's like you're fitting a front door sort of thing. Over time, these tend to lose their stickiness and they just fall right out. But it is nice that you can walk into a chemist or supermarket usually and find these alongside Christmas tree ones, you know. But there's a genre for earplugs that is really, really hard to fill. The ones for sleeping. Quick tangent. Real estate agents are a lot like used car salesmen. As soon as you're out the gates, they're happy. That all they gotta do is get someone in the seat and away from the building. So thanks to this channel, I escaped the old slum hole I was living in and got dumped into a beautiful little house that's right underneath the airplane line. <laughs> Hey, all the planes taxi and land over the house. It, it drives me nuts from six in the morning to, I don't know, two in the morning. Such a shame. I used to really like airplanes and things and follow channels. They're just flying trucks and minibuses to me now. And blocking those idiots out as I try to go to bed at reasonable hours. It's tough. I, hey, the, the sleep buds are great. They're really stinking expensive. And I do find after maybe like two weeks of using them every single night, my ears start to hurt. Both have made these as small as they can make them, and they're all soft rubber and whatnot, but you know, that's just an issue I've been having. These can be just 
is hideous for sleeping in. Not that these are uncomfortable, but the earwax situation can get really bad. And like what I found is like, it would just push it all up to the back and just keep it there. Um, and just be careful when pulling these out, by the way, especially these foam ones, it can create like a big seal and it can go book when you do it. And it really sucks. <laughs> yeah, I found waking up with these in this ain't nice. These are the soft squishy motorbike ones, but the traditional like, you know, hard backed ones, they can really be painful for sleeping sometimes. I mean, because sure, I mean, maybe you use these one or two nights a week and it's okay. But if you want to drive them every night, it just pain just builds up over time for me. These are some of the better ones, but sometimes they can stick to the pillow and just get ripped out of your head or they just lose their stickiness. And you learn that by, you know, when you get woken up at five in the morning from some cargo plane going over and you realize that they fell out. But there's one extra enemy in the fight of earplugs that fit in your head while you sleep. And that's you. You are your greatest enemy. More notably, your subconscious, right? Forget sleep talking and sleepwalking. Some people have made sandwiches in their sleep. And so if there's something annoying in your ear while you sleep, you know what you do? You just pull it out. I'd wake up to these being pulled out all the time and you just can't control that. Tell someone who snores to just stop snoring. <laughs> yeah, sure. Your subconscious just goes, I'm gonna do what I want. So I've been hunting for a long time for a set of earplugs that I could use for sleeping. And like every night reliably that I don't get tired of after a little bit and I don't yank out of my head. Happy years. I've been trying so many different plugs and you know what? I've been driving my set of these for, I don't know, two, three months now and it's all been sweet. They're not as hardcore as these in the sound canceling department. I mean, 25 dB, that's good. I'd, I'd sit through a band rehearsal with that. And the whole idea is that, yeah, they're reusable and cleanable. I have worn out a set of Christmas tree ones, by the way. They just get deformed. You know, I've tried soaking them in hot water so they come back, but that just weakened it even more. This is their kit where they send you all three sizes. And that's just so you can figure out what size your head is. And maybe you need a bigger one in one ear or a smaller one in the other. You know, that's a real thing. Ears are weird. They're everywhere. So they tell you, you know, the big ones are the black ones, the medium's the white one, and the little boys are the red ones. And there you go. That's what they are. Ear holes aren't shaped like you think they'd be. I mean, if you look at the AirPod Pros, they've got a kind of shape like this as well. You can see from the front page how they fit, and they sit kind of flat. The colored bit is hard plastic, but most of it is really soft and squishy. And they are tiny. I mean, compared, like, this is a tiny Christmas tree one. I mean, you get up against one of these boys, and they don't go all the way down your head. So they don't tend to smush all the earwax down the back of my head. I mean, ideally, I'd like to sleep without earplugs. Let my ears breathe, you know? This is kind of like putting plastic wrap around them. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's still a slight situation, but it's not causing me big issues. And these are little carry cases, which are pretty crap, to be honest. Yeah, you know, it's good that it comes with them. Uh, but yeah, I find these just pop open really easily. Or not. Oh, my book so. How dare you make me a liar. You know, I don't want to promise some sort of cure-all. You know, my ears are different to your ears. And even the biggest one, you know, I could actually push really far down into my head, you know. But these are the ones I've been driving lately, and I've been having no issues at all. Like, I actually look forward to putting them in and going, oh, cool, quiet. <laughs> and, you know, if you're down for spending an extra couple of bucks, they actually have ones made out of ocean plastics and recycled ones. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, the fact that you're turning ocean waste into like really really good earplugs so if you've tried a lot of plugs and you're really struggling like achoo, what have you got to lose i really dig it you know get the pack with all the sizes in it it's not cheap getting the three pack but it, you know, how else do you know which ones fit it, like they gotta fit that's how your plugs work and once you know what size you are you know you can grab a couple of spare pairs and then you set and if you happen to be a musician as well and you go to gigs and loud shows and whatnot Man, these are just great to have in your pocket. I mean, like, <laughs> that fits in that really weird little jeans pocket. You know the one I'm talking about. And here's to a cromulent night's sleep. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, my duck. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here. Because, mate, $1 a month, I do extra videos. 
It's the least I can do for you. And hey, on the topic of me being a noisy drummer boy all last year and continuing, I've been working on creating, and I'm, I'm not lying, a drum museum. I'm gonna bore you with drum things. I'm at the stage of my drum history thing where I'm just doing a lot of reading and stuff. And this has been an amazing book. Someone's like can collaborated like all the biggest, hottest drummers from all, oh, there's Bonzo and there's young Buddy Rich. Cause yeah, drums are nuts. They're just all over the place. So thanks very much, mate. I'll see you all next time. Wait, you have no idea what's going on. You're just leaning off of the wall now. It, well, what? Well, you want to fight about it, mate? You want to fight about it, Frank? Hey? Come on, mate. You make the first move. You're very good at this. Hey, it's the after show. Thanks so much for supporting me. Like, I keep saying it. You guys kill my anxieties of being an aloof weirdo. <laughs> but I'm gonna bore you with drum business. This is just like absolute drum geeks heaven. Cause it's got every big name drummer in here, their setups, like you know, talking about how they developed them. Because the awesome thing about drums is there's no rules. You do whatever you want. Look at John Bonham's kettle drum. Like <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why I love the drums. It's like you make it however you want. There are no wrong notes. Look at this. I've got some favorites saved. Chick Webb. Man, these are early drum kit days. It was just starting to become like a regular thing. Look at these cymbal stands. Things hanging from wires and whatnot. I've got some of these cymbals, by the way. They sound hideous, but I love these blocks. Look, 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 look. Cowbells and things. And yeah, that's a big piece of leather, by the way. And that's why people would often get them painted. It's a lot of money. Oh, breakdown of his drum kit and the side. 28 inch bass drum. That, that is obscene. Drums aren't like that anymore. Gene Krupa, man, he's like one of the founding fathers of the development of the drum kit. You know, sing, sing, sing. He talked to Mr. Zildjian and asked, could you make thinner, bigger cymbals? Which is where we are today. Because look how tiny they are. It was all floor tom, bass drum, snare drum. People nearly never used the cymbals. And Gene was like, mate, can you make them bigger for me? He was on the money. Look, how you hanging out at the Zildjian factory? 1939. They only moved to America 10 years before that. Look at this splash cymbal mounted there. We don't do that anymore, but we need to bring that back. Freaking Buddy Rich, right? You go watch Buddy Rich drum solos. There's one where he's in his 60s and he's still killing it. Dude was literally famous at like age four. There he is as a kid. Do you know, like, look how big the old bass drums were back in the day. <laughs> he was a hard ass, right? He was, he, but he he knew what it took to be the best, and he stinking did it. Ringo, like, oh, I mean, you got Elvin Jones here, jazz, big, heavy, amazing dude, and Ringo. He basically made Zildjian a household name because he played American avid Zildjians. And apparently, Zildjian was a small operation before they jumped on the Ed Sullivan show, and after that, they'll backlog with orders for like two years. I've got the Zildjian history books so are like, gosh, Ringo just blew up the whole company. Amazing what one person can do, right? There you go. There's his setup. There you go. Color photo. Ah, oh, Black Oyster Pearl. You can still buy these to this day. Neil Pert, Rip Man, Legend. This book is great. If you're a drum nerd, get this book. Tony, Tony Williams, man. Bernard Purdy, he's still kicking it to this day. Dude's great. Go check out his video on the Purdy Shuffle. He just yells like, it's just a drum teacher's right to share the Bernard Purdy Shuffle video with their students. You betcha I did. John Bonham, do I need to say any more? Like, I've, I'm slowly hunting down all of his original symbols, not the exact ones he played, but 1970s, like same weight and sizes. And then I need to hunt down one of his snare drums. There you go. Superphonic, like, I need to get a 70s one. So expensive. Bonzo's like one of my heroes, man. Dennis Chambers, like, man, I really emulate so much from this guy. I love the way he does things. Such a modern player. And look at that old 90s kit, man. He, he's been around for ages and he's still kicking it now. I've got his signature snare drum and it's the one that I use for nearly all of my gigging career. Best drum ever. Still got it. Chad Smith, Chili Peppers. Man, you're just hearing a rock beat. Boo, boo, ka, boo, boo. No, it's how you play it. That's what I love about acoustic drums. Like, you gotta hit it in the right spot. If you hit near the edges, it's ringier. And you could do rim shots to get like a thwack to it. And Chad plays it monumental volumes. Dude is hit. <laughs> like, yeah, if you hear him live, it's like off. And that's how you get that Chili Pepper sound. Boo, boo, ka, boo, boo. You gotta hit him hard. Neil Pert, I mean, look at that kit, man. 
you know, I mean, you know, do I need to say much more about Rush? And Tony Williams, man, jazz heavy, he played with Miles Davis at the age of 17. That, that's what he was. He passed away just with complication with simple surgery. It's w <sighs> stripped from the planet, man. I've got this big vintage uh, poster of him holding a Zildjian K that my drum teacher gave to me before he moved. You know, he was in his 70s and retiring from teaching and I always pined after that poster and I, I got it. But I mean, <laughs> that was only a handful of the drummers in this book. If you're into it, man, I, I hope there's a PDF version, I don't know. But come on, books, hey, the battery doesn't run out. Well, thanks for letting me be a drum geek and boring you. I, I can't wait to talk about drums all day. Like, they're all gonna be on my garbage time channel. It's actually what's filling up my weeks at the moment is like setting up this drum museum. It's gonna be like a big showroom. Like, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> so thanks so much and, um, you know, just do the thing. Oh my gosh, mate. Is that a genuine eye, mate? Bootleg iPods, they are not special at all. Not even a little bit. Some would call them common burdensome e-waste. And this is usually how you find bootlegs. I mean, obviously, it's trying to be a nano. I mate, that's so Aussie sounding. Yeah, there you go. It's like, nah, mate, it's not a nano. Look at this fugly D-pad arrangement. And let's not forget, it's not the iPod, it's the iMate. And it's being pretty transparent. There's no Apple here. There's no iPod here. And you can just see straight up, that's what you're getting. And would you believe people chose not to buy this? This is brand new, yet reeks of age. So the guy that we're actually looking at, I'm calling the worst bootleg because they have the audacity to put iPod and Apple on it. Gosh, I'd love to be a fly on the wall when the artist smashed out this beautiful cover out and like, I don't know, MS Paint or something. <laughs> this Apple here it doesn't look good. I don't like it. And there's another one here. Mate, that's not just the Walkman logo flipped upside down at all. Oh, here's the different flavors of it. Not megabytes, just, hmm. <laughs> 512 mmms. I can faintly see a worn out biro that's indicating this is the exquisite top of the line 8 gigabyte model. It's, I mean, real iPods use packing tape to seal it, right? Oh, these are inspiring words. Digital play. The arts app music. I don't know if that's a T or a B. Uh, ab, ab music. Gives you abs. Uh oh, guys, I'm starting to think this might be a bootleg. No one filled in the model or color. No! <gasps> No! I- I've seen this before! Play the clip! Oh. <laughs> what? No! Like, hang on! Oh, hang on, it's, it's all lining up now. Yes, I can guess the people who are too lazy to recut the hole a little bit bigger will be lazy enough to not hit backspace to f- <laughs> It's the MP3, I mean, 4 player. Oh no, guys, I'm starting to think this is really low effort now. Mate, let's look at the dazzling features that might be in here. I, I mean, that tape is questionable. We got the MP3 ME4 player, the instruction manual, can't wait for that. Application CD, unique stereo earphone. D just one. Mate, if it's got two earbuds, I'm gonna be blown away. USB cable, look out. And that's not how you spell ACDC, mate. It's meant to have a lightning bolt in there. I, I gotta have a quick prediction. It's gonna be a nano of some sorts, it always is. I've never seen a bootleg full-size classic. Ever. But yeah, it's just gonna be mini USB, just generic trash whatever's in here. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. Oh, we're breaking- Oh, watch out, fingers, we're breaking the seal on this puppy. Oh my duck. One, two, three, way! Ew! Ew! Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Mate, that's how you know she's genuine. That's a real iPod egg bag right there. Oh, that's a genuine disc, I'm sure of it. <gasps> that is deceitful, sorry. Hang on, 2006, Apple Computer Inc. Oh, that's not cool. <laughs> Whoa, that is cheeky, look at this. Designed by Apple in California. Oh, whoa. I, I, we'll get to the- this is getting saucy, man. Get in your genuine egg bag. <laughs> a silicon idiot. Great. Oh, it's gross. Ew. Ew, it's so full of dirt. Did that packing tape not seal perfectly? The unique earphone. Oh, they gave us two of them. I love how these are new and they've fallen out of their crappy foam holder. Whoa. Whoa, hang on. No. <gasps> it's got a 30 pin. It's a bo this is a bootleg iPod of the highest, uh, lowest caliber. Oh, 
gross. And we got... Okay. G good. It comes with this. All right. Um, this is looking very low effort. This is... Yeah, exactly. This is from the factory. Someone at the factory was meant to go, all right, it's the it's the medium-sized pile of junk that no one should be buying that's going to wind up as e-waste in the oceans. Yeah, and then, and then like that. Wow. This is just transparently junk. Oh, my book, sir. That is so deceitful. Oh, I love this. Look at the, the screen and the bezel. Look, it's slightly this way. If this is actually a touch click wheel, I'm going to lose it. No, it's it's gonna control like the eye mate. I'm sure of it. Like if I flip this over like this, that is deceitful. That is that is messy, I'm telling you. Look at all this effort. And then like the box looks like a high school project. Oh my gosh, we're arming the nugget with a bootleg 30 pin. With a bootleg 30 pin. Uh-huh. Right, I've got iTunes running, mate, because it's an iPod, it should show up in iTunes. Three, two, one, arming the nugget! Oh, that's such a- oh, that's an iPod! <laughs> Alright, come on, show up in iTunes, mate, this is an- Where'd you go? Oh, no, 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 it's still there. Hang on a minute, it's not showing up in iTunes, guys. It, it's not showing up anywhere, actually, guys. Uh-oh! Well, no! <laughs> Oh, it's in disk utility though. Generic USB disk device. Eight and a half gigs. Well, what, S? E what does S mean? Doesn't show up anywhere else. Well, let's erase it. It's doing it. Yeah, come on, come on. There it is. Oh, guys, I'm starting to think this isn't a real iPod. Well, let's just put Scarlet Fire on it. Uh, the, the Shrek intro on MP4 and some random AVI video that I forget what it is. Oh man, it's so responsive. Look at it go. All right, eject. Here we go. Come on. Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh, no! That is so... Is it a touch? It's- Oh, you piece of junk! Wow! No, don't- It's got the Apple logo! Dude, this is so scammy! No, don't stick with- oh. It keeps just kicking me out and boot looping. All right, I'm gonna plug it into the wall this time. Wow, the battery works! Is it D-pad? Is it a D-pad? It's a stupid- Oh, I hate that! Left and right are up and down. Get game, go on. Go oh menus oh <laughs> Oh my favorite game ever mate it's called disappointment this thing is just a crappy d-pad or is it What This is me loading a song guys S starting Did that just crash go on like play a song you idiot <laughs> Wow! Wow! Got videos! It- No! It, it- This is a scam! Go on, record! Uh, guys, this is the worst bootleg I've ever used. Not only is it actually masquerading as that, it's iPod designed by Apple, it's got a 30 pin, and then worse than that, it doesn't work! Photo! Uh -huh. I- I can't even use the recorder. I can't even use... I... This stupid disc right? I have a confession. You know the EPC? I've lost it! I'm doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes here, and a lot of stuff is in boxes at the moment. I, I don't know where I put it, but I need to know what's on this right? I've been meaning to buy a gaming laptop. I know I can build a PC, but I, I love laptops so much. Soz! And I'll even buy a CD drive, because the iMac's got a CD drive, but it, it's a slot load. It won't take these dingus discs, right? And now we're gonna cut to the next day when I've bought a machine <laughs> and a drive just to smell this. I literally just bought this it was on clearance it's been sitting for more than a year at the jb hi-fi i mean it's it's got a 3060 in it that can run rocket league this is my first windows 11 experience it was miserable it has taken two hours to get to this point i hate you windows 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 windows god just do it just do it already Die! Die now! Why will you die?
Just do your thing, do it. Oh, for this stupid thing. Give it. It's time to think of wasted my money for this disc. Why is this off-center? The MPC drives the procedure. Um, tell tool, AMV tool, Chinese disc. That's in Chinese. Yeah, go on, H how do I do it? This is a quality word file. Well, well, there you go. It has crappy spamware and whatnot on it. And, and get, stick it up your windows. Linux needs to take over, eh? Well, there's something I want to know, which is, will this work with a regular 30 pin? Look, it's a genuine cable. Oh, <gasps> Axel, Axel, does it appear? Come on, Sh show me. Disk utility? Yeah, there it is again. Why is it only a gig? <laughs> C can I erase it? Okay, it erased. It's still only a gig in size for some reason. It also says it's only a gig. What if that's actually how much storage it has and it never had eight gigs? Right, let's, I'm just gonna put Scarlet Fire on it. We're lucky to get anything. But that worked through a real 30 pin. Music, oh. Can't wait. But the fact that this pile of junk actually worked and synced over a genuine one makes me think that, yeah, it's using the same pinout. <laughs> well, before the inevitable, <clears throat> mate, we're gonna try the genuine earphone that are very generous and came with two of them. Oh, lovely. Oh, how have they wrapped this in there? That's, that's, you idiots, that can't even. <laughs> wow, how do you screw up? To oh, no. Oh, it's tangled in there. Oh, come on. Yes. Yes. <laughs> give me my nugget phones. Give me this. We've got to give them a genuine. Oh, <laughs> that's not a stress relief if it pulls out immediately. Oh, I'm going to give these a quick smell first. Generic junk is always nothing but mids, no tops, no bottoms. It's the same ones that get shipped with everything, which means they lied to me again. Unique stereo earphone. More like generic trash that comes with every one of these. Smells like a chemical factory. This one held out, but there you go. <laughs> nice stress relief, you idiots. I'm so happy that we blew one up. That's always so special. There's only one thing left to do. I actually felt this. Oh, wow. No, nah, it's made out of nothing. Yeah, that just brings me great joy. When you see it's got a Samsung chip in it. I'm going to carefully put it back together so we can do the inevitable. Oh. <laughs> oh my boxer! If you misbehave, this could be you! They are my duck and my sausage! We're losing everything here! You can pull it apart like an orange. No screws at all. This is the worst bootleg I've ever, ever found. I mean it. As I said, bootlegs never claim to be an iPod. They never try and like copy the, the UI and do all that sort of sneaky stuff. And then the fact that this didn't even work. It, this was a f straight up scam. You know, I'm glad no one bought this. I'm glad it, well, it was only me that suffered because I had a lot of fun. <laughs> well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here, because, mate, $1 a month, I do extra videos. Of course, we're having a look at the eye, mate. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. And, mate, I'll see you all next time. This is how much of a dingus Frank is. She finds this tail. But don't just deal with it. I'm grilling you, Frank. Look at this tail position. Is that comfortable, Frank? Yeah? Or do you think you're above me, are you? Yeah? Why well, don't pull this nonsense, Frank? What you got to say about it? Yeah, that's right, you slink away. Hey, it's the after show. Thanks so much for supporting me. I really appreciate it. As always, mate, you make this mess work. And I, mate, I got nothing funny to say after that. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bootleg iPod. I, I bought it literally because it's called the iMate. I mean, Aussie man, Aussie. This is just how most bootleg iPods really are, where they never claim to be an iPod and they got this crappy D-pad business going on and you just transparently know that you don't want this. Oh, snazzy 
looking Apple ad knockoff and why is he holding it at that angle from that? That doesn't look good. Ooh, the one gigabyte model. Voice recording, I hope it works. Whoa, man, it can do USB 1.1. Here we go. Look out, I mates. We're gonna be looking at the... Get to the nugget in a bit. It, It is, oh. It is flimsy sounding, but you know, we'll get to it in a bit. What treasures await? This is what I'm excited about. Uh, oh, it's a rat's nest. Well, let's just dump it out. <laughs> you know, it's a good product when the manual doesn't fit in the box they've decided to use. The MP4 player, what? Why isn't it called the iMate? Oh man, look at it, it's like a phone book for rats. Beautifully formatted. Yep, this is looking like the typical nano bootleg that I grew up with. My <laughs> my first portable video player was a bootleg, by the way, guys, so I'm pretty warm to these. It's just blah, 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 blah. I mean, you know, it's it's all readable, I guess. It's all here. I can't complain. Yeah, it's, it's cromulent. I can't really complain. Oh no! <gasps> Oh, it's got old mate's gold hanging on him. Look at that. Oh, this isn't you at all. Oh, these are filthy. Oh, they are not going in my ear. I don't care. I don't need to hear the mids anyway. And holy dingus. This is the mother of all mini ewers. I've got so many of these. But this is the stonkest, chonkest one I've ever seen. Holy guts. Look at the look at the length on this, man. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. Frank stinks, Frank stinks, Frank stinks, Frank stinks. Dun, dun. You know, in fact, before we look at the nugget, I gotta get rid of these. And ew, is the heat gonna make these smell? <laughs> Boo and ew. Boo and ew. Oh, I'm smelling them. Ew, I'm smelling someone's head wax. Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, strain the bin. Ew, those were awful. Here's the nugget. <laughs> no branding on the back. That's amazing. Yeah. Ooh, microphone. Hope we can yell into that. It's pretty desolate. All right, everyone get back. I'm arming the nugget. At least I can stand far away from it. The cable's so stinking huge. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh oh. No. Oh, on. Yeah, come on. Oh, uh, I want my working eye mate. There it is. No name. That's a great. Oh, <gasps> when you were young. Wow, this stuff on it. It's from 07. That's great. Bootex, more like bootleg. Hey, MP. Ew. Ew. What's all this? Set up, ooh, it's got software on here, yuck. Well, I'm gonna put Scarlet Fire on there. We gotta, we gotta, can we play one MP3 on an MP3 player? Record, go, it, ew, 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 what's wrong with it? Oh, no, no, what's happening? What's happening? Look, it's endless. It's just forming, it won't stop. Oh, is this a fight? Look at this! What's wrong with this? Oh! That is, that is strange. It is bricking the computer. I shouldn't have double clicked on that. Oh, oh. That's not good. Oh man, I'm getting virus vibes out of this thing. But the killer's worked. I'm just gonna eject this stupid- Get out! Oh! No! Just force eject! Get out! Oh, here we are. Left and right's up and down, of course it is, because it's junk. All right, well, music work. It do oh, this is the same UI that my old, my first ever bootleg had. Ooh, it's got heaps of music on here. Power on, Bluetooth mode. Yeah, you're not looking forward to this one. This crappy cable I found. Auxiliary mode. Yes, you play. Come on, play. Oh, hang on. Oh, get out. <laughs> this thing works terrible. All right, play. That's the killers. Can I find Scarlet Fire? Is is this it? Yip 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 yip. Oh no! Oh d oh no! No stop! 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 Oh! Shut up! Oh no! I went a bit too hard there. That's glass. <laughs> oh wow! The sexy speaker's first like. It's not a kill, it's an injury! Oh, what a sexy way to go. Well, right, I'll just- I gotta get to the recorder. Must get to voice recorder. 
can't see nugget screen. So like this one time, I wanted an MP3 player, but like I want it to be an old mate as well. Like you, you got old mate Craig, but that's just Craig, mate. Like I wanted a mate, hey, like a genuine friend. And, and so I bought the iMate, and it's been a disaster, mate. It's like the worst friend ever, and I'm, I'm crushingly regretting my decisions. And the screen shattered. Some sexy beast did this. Who did this to you? It's typical Nugget affair. Well, I think there's only one honourable death for this. The sexy speaker finishes off her first prey. Oh, my puck cell. Oh no, there's glass everywhere! Oh my gosh, her first kill, guys. Wow, sexy speaker. Oh, and it was violent as well. The screen is still going, but it's right. Oh, mate, we'll step in and just bippity boppity boopity. All right, this is now actually a barefoot hazard. <sighs> Thank you, I mate. You are not my mate. Well, <laughs> thanks for watching. I'm gonna. I, my sausages are everywhere. The mid thousands. If like 2010 onwards is the smartphone era, mid thousands was just the portable media era. And when a business gets big, that's when the crap comes out. I'll talk about this at some point, heaved out by Tiger. Can you believe no one bought this? But the thing I gotta show you was pretty stinking expensive. I mean, Oakley's. That's a big swinging brand, man. And these are the Oakley Thumps. 128 megabytes. That's how you know you're dealing with a nugget right here. That's the nugget's badge of honor. I'm gonna hide what it looks like. But mate, root beer frame bronze lenses. Oh, your dad would love these. 2004. To give you a vibe on that, this model of iPod had only just come out. Oh, yeah, this is when it was booming. MP3 players have been out since 1997 and they were almost illegal at one point. So by now, a lot of the scariness has been worked out. Oh my gosh, mate, it does USB 1.1. Oh man, look how many asterisks they have. <laughs> That's how you know something's big business. Why is that Oakley? Hang on, that's a sticker. What is that hiding? You can't hide the treasures from me. I'm gonna get them treasures and destroy my fingernail while I do it. Ah, oh, yep, you can feel this has been on there for 18 years. People wonder why my nails are all destroyed. They're just tools to me, guys. Hey, huh? They're, they're just hiding the USB logo. But why? Is it USB? It says, I mean, it does USB 1.1. All you dads out there are getting really excited, though, because I'm telling you, you're going to love these. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All the dads out there are going, mate, I want to wear some footy shorts and thongs and do the lawn with them babies on. And look at these. They deploy. Yep. They <laughs> Oh, that has a gear in it. Look at this. It can wave to you. Bronze, bronze, and bronze. All right, we'll, we'll yell at this <laughs> nugget in a bit. Like old gifts, you gotta read the card first. Whoa! <laughs> this is the biggest manual I've ever seen. It's like a phone book for mice. They're just nugget glasses. How difficult could it be? I'm gonna guess this is every language and only 15 pages are relevant. Let's have a look. Oh, so close. Twink, there you go. That's the English bit. All of this, useless to me. <laughs> I love the old manky laptops. Oakley Thump TM allows you to transfer MP3, WMA, and WAV files from your computer and listen to music anywhere. You can also use Oakley Thump to back up important files and transport any kind of file on computer. Imagine being late for school and going, I'm sorry, teacher, I'm late. Like, my Oakley Thump swiped my homework and I have to redo it. Can I have an extension, please? Oh, the accessories, the car charger. The, the wall adapter, the, the USB cable, these are dazzling. The soft vault and the soft box. I, I don't want to know what those are. Now there's the quick start guide, which is the size of a contemporary manual. This is the same crap as before. Oh, yeah, okay. O only that is useful. The rest is... Oh, warranty card need that. Oh, excellent. We can... So oh, I can see those accessories. Oh, there's the soft vault. And the soft box. Oh, there's the car charger. Dads are just tingling at the amount of places they can bring their Oakleys. And again, like that's, ugh. What are you? Oh. Oh, hang on, wah! I gotta say, this is, I mean, I've got 300 billion million, like, you know, if the world's short on copper, just give me a ring, mate. I'll sell you several tons of it. This is the nicest mini USB cable I've ever seen. And I mean that. <gasps> Oakley, you shouldn't have. I mean, like, Oakley, you shouldn't have. But you shouldn't have. What's underneath the foam? foam, foam. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, they've just got that zany, like, 
ski snowboarder thing to it. Oh, there's the tiny little USB guy. I mean, it's cool it's got a rechargeable battery. I mean, you know, you'd hope it would, but it is 2004, so it's really early days. And the box is claiming six hours. I mean, that's a lot of nugget phoning. I'm gonna try them on real quick. You know, crazy enough, they actually do just sit right on your ear, like quite cromulently, I suppose. <laughs> it, it might force you to have to wear them in a particular way, but um, yeah, because like they're being supported by the glasses, they don't have to go in your ear, they can just kind of sit there and, oh, that's not as bad as I thought, man. <laughs> Let's plug in the nugget. Oh, there's no screen or anything, that's, that's no, I mean, you, there's sunglasses, what do you expect? But I mean like, yeah, there's not gonna be a lot of interaction with this guy. Man, this is a nice cable and it barely fits. <laughs> Actually, yeah, the earbud's kind of in the way. Huh. Oh, good, and they get dragged around everywhere, possibly damaging them. Can you believe no one bought these? <laughs> oh, look how snazzy the, the ends are, man! Total dad flex right there. All right, show up on the computer, mate. Go on, mate, show up on the computer. And it better not say no name or I'm gonna be really mad. How about show up at all? If you don't show up at all, I'm gonna get really mad. <gasps> Oh yeah! Dude, it's called the Thump 128! Hey, Oakley! It actually has a name. What? H hang on! Wait a minute! I is this not new? <laughs> this is full of junk! Cre I get Oakley created 07, modified 05. Uh, I mean, it transcends time. Nuggets do that, huh? What the heck is Jane Doe? So, the life. Mr. Man. Okay, this is probably copyrighted. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna talk. I'm just, I, Mr. Man. I don't need content bots. You know, hey, <laughs> get me. He's a really ambiguous girlfriend, karma, heartburn. Oh, that's a Thanksgiving special. I definitely don't want to remove any of this music. But then, like, I just want to listen to Scarlet Fire. Here comes Scarlet Fire. I'm gonna add O O at the beginning, so it appears at the top, and I'm a genius, mate. I'm an expert nugget here. Eject. Eject. <laughs> yes, thank you. All right. Well, there's no display or anything. I've got a feeling I'm probably gonna have to keep it plugged in, which makes it. Ah, um... oh, okay. That's volume. I need the manual. This really is a bona fide nugget if you need the manual to figure out how to use it. Every one of my iPods was used from Cashies, and I mean it, and it's like, it never came with a manual. I never saw a manual. You didn't need the manual. Use at your own risk, or now you tell me. But I already put them on my head. How long do I have to live? Flip up lens handle. Flip up lens handle. <gasps> Flip up lens! <gasps> Dads would love these! Oh man, look, you can read the paper and go back to being the cool dad. And then, yeah, reading the paper, cool dad. Yeah, but how do I stupid use it? Hold the play pause until the, the tone is heard. Oh, will it keep working? I'm not confident. Of course there's a stupid jump cut. I left these on charge overnight. I did everything I could. And these are like the worst kind of wireless whatevers because like you can't even use them even on charge. I, I couldn't get them to work. Found some reviews from the day. Some people thought they looked excellent. And, and then people saying that they have no style, but it's because they've never liked Oakley glasses. <laughs> and it was like, they were okay. It wasn't as bad as I thought. It was just okay. Some people like the sound. Coolest product of the year. 2004 wasn't cooked at all. And they cost nearly 500 bucks in 2004. 500 bucks. But I've let you down by not getting them to work. So as punishment, I, I wore them in one of my drum streams. Better play some, some really cool stuff to commemorate these amazing glasses. It's gotta, it's gotta be, it's gotta be good. Yeah, this one's great. I'm sorry about that. But look! Look who's invading! Frank! Wait, stop struggling, Frank! Frank, you're struggling in front of everybody. You, do, you get in your hammock every day! I'm not giving these sunglasses the, the, proper, the proper vibe, you know? Like, I, I gotta play something that's not totally messed up will make everyone leave. <laughs> Thank you.
Sorry. Maybe you didn't hear enough of it. Yeah, Frank, do a donut. Yay. <laughs> no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take these off. These glasses bring out the worst in me. I'm telling you, man, dads would have loved this. And it's funny how this idea hasn't gone away. I mean, I've done a video on the Bose sunglasses, and they're pretty cool. Like, I didn't hate them. They're not audiophile standard, obviously, but just out and about, I thought it was really fun. <laughs> Way better than these. <laughs> oh, the mid-thousands. I'm so glad you're gone. Well... That's it. Thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here. One dollar a month, I do extra videos, but I do have extra videos for free. It's called Garbage Time. It's videos I make about anything. Frank's there. There is the float plane stream. So sorry that isn't free. Independent platforms, are, but you know, all the whinging I had with Twitch. I've had float plane developers tune into my stream to fix things while I was streaming. Like, it's actually amazing. And a price at half the price of Twitch. But if you're in part of the Patreon, mate, nothing related, we're building a dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna build a Lego dinosaur. I mean, this is a three in one, but I want the big stinky Frank with legs and arms. So, mate, that's it, and I'll see you all next time. Even if I take her box out for cleaning, the Frank will always be the Frank. Look at you. Hey, it's the After Show. Thanks so much for supporting me. I really appreciate it. You make this hot mess spin around and um, clever emotional words. We're, we're going to make a dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, simple as that. My, I want the T-Rex. I love smelly reptiles. I have a smelly reptile. I, I don't want that. I, I want this guy. The big giant walking Frank. That's that's a walking Frank. Look, you go like this. That's what Frank looks like. Chunky in the middle and bitey at one end and stinky at the other. Give me my walking Frank. Okay. Oh, no. There's heaps. There's, oh, gosh. Oh, no. There's heaps. <laughs> nope. Nope. Yes. Oh, great. I've got to be made out of plastic to do this. This is going to be more intensive than I feared. <laughs> oh, I'm doomed. Oh, this isn't going to be easy and cruisy at all. Hardcore Legoers will, will do something called knurling where they put it all into piles. That ain't happening. Make a tusk thing. Oh, man, we're halfway there. Uh. It's, it's all making sense, guys. Uh. <gasps> it's got a miscolored spot on it. Lego. What a big bit. Oh, that's so satisfying how that goes on like that. Oh, look, the scary claws. That's cute. Yay. Oh, that's satisfying. I like that. I love these bits. That's, that's, that's good. Ooh, the dreaded single bits. It's like welding. You don't get them in the wrong spot. Look at this awesome bit. Ready? Boom. And then, go boom. And then, Kablamo! Yeah! Look, it's it's almost a flying Frank now. It just needs a head. I'm having fun. This is fun. Mm. Ooh. Oh, it's a chunky leg. Yeah, chunky leg. Another chunky leg. <laughs> Ooh, teeth and gears or what? I gotta slide stuff into other stuff and... Oh, yeah. Oh, scary feet. That's what this is. Oh, that's so cool! <laughs> Scary foot. Yes! <laughs> oh, this thing's awesome. I love this phase when you're like, what am I even doing? Like, what is- what is this? Oh, we're making the snooty boop. I'm spying a snooty boop. Putting on teefies. That's a snooty boop. <laughs> oh, the little tongue is cute. Love this whole thing. My favorite illustration, which which is being a dentist on a T-Rex. Uh, ah, <laughs> look at this. Uh, ah, didn't make another foot. I'm an idiot. <laughs> this is made for kids. It did say times two. I'm a dope. The articulated middle toe is just the best bit. And cut and ju and there you go. <laughs> it was far more intensive than I thought. But it was still ridiculously easy. I mean, Lego instructions are a masterclass in no word spoken, you know, to check it out. Like, it's got neck articulation. I love this. Like, that's super cute. Oh, no. I love the claws and the big stinking tail. And, and it stands up and I really like it. Yeah, that was great. I loved it. But it needs to be a Frank. Look, now it's Frank. <laughs> 
what are you going to do? Hide in your box and poo where you sleep? I bet. Well, thanks so much for the support. I super appreciate you. Uh, you know, just... I don't know. It's a Sony. Look at these alien looking. <laughs> what a vibe. There you go, mate. Sony DR11s. These are from 1971. And proof that Sony's just never been good at naming things. Come on, boys. Just break the streak already. Oh, it just, it's like the dashboard of an old Datsun. I love it. And st no padding. You did, it was, did 70s be different. They look fantastic, though. And this is where the adjustment is. And yes, you can adjust the volume for each side because early recordings, the really early stereo days, mate, they had all the drums in this side and the bass and that because they wanted it to feel super stereo. So that's how you EQ'd a little bit. You know, there's a reason why we don't do this anymore. But they're the show that Sony's been doing audio for a long time. I really do enjoy me a good Sony. Their software is awful. Sorry, Sony, your software is awful. But their hardware is just stinking great. And a lot of people just know them as like the PlayStation company. Although they are well known for making like really contemporary noise canceling head pahonies. But these are sensible headphones. But the ones I'm gonna show you are when just Sony's went, stuff it. Let's just go nuts. Is my privilege to put on this stinking dirty iPad. The XB 1000s. Sony, awesome name. You did it. You did it once. Well, you, XB 1000s. Or should I say, Jabber 10 Hunjos? And, um, uh, you. <laughs> yep, it's like you're wearing boxing gloves. <laughs> Well, right now you're all looking at these going, mate, I'm going to take a bit of a guess here. Are these designed for extra bass? Surely that's not what the XB stands for. My pair came in the box and, mate, XB stands for extra bass. <laughs> My pair are heavily worn and they will be leaving crumlets everywhere and all over my- Oh, it's begun. It is- it has already begun, guys. So, before I begin talking about them, because they've got history. <laughs> Mate, we just need to hear them first. Hey, the freakish ears on a stand are here. We're covered in crumlets. And be aware, you know, you're listening through your TV speakers, your smart fridge, or whatever. Right, she's just a fun bit of point of reference. And of course, we need the referee, which is the herd. 600s by um Sen Yeah they have extra bass. Funny that. And these are a pair of headphones that actually really show the weakness of those freakish ears on a stand. They don't pick up how wide headphones can feel, or the sound stage, or the imaging, or like how 3D it feels, where the like the noise is coming from. Because, you know, you're looking at these and going like, okay, Sony's like, we need to make extra bass headphones. So for marketing purposes, we need to make them look like they're for spoof heads. And yeah, you know, that's the only reason why they have these insane ear pads. Uh, no, that is not true at all. So in audio, there's a lot of 
different speaker technology and you know how it actually makes the sound. These are what's called dynamic drivers. Your car speakers are dynamic drivers. Most hi-fi equipment are dynamic drivers. You know, where it's got the cone and the magnet and the guy that do the thing. On the back of the Gerber 10 Hundros box, there you go. That's what the actual speaker looks like. It's a single piece of plastic and it makes all of the sound. Yeah, it's fun telling people that. For the low notes, it does big movements, and for the high notes, it does them in between. It is mental. And the idea with these guys isn't just to have extra bass. That's easy. Like, you can just go on a Windows Media Player for XP and you just drag the bass sliders up. Boom, extra bass. But not all equipment can play the lowest bass. That's why subwoofers and hi-fi rigs are so much fun because they're playing the stuff that it's not even a note anymore. It's just a, a raw frequency shaking you. Humans can hear between 20 hertz at the lowest and 20,000 hertz at the highest. I'm telling if you can hear 20k you have some of the best hearing that has ever been around and as you age that falls in you know maybe you can't hear over 16k or 15 some people are just simply born that way that's why recommending headphones is so hard it's so unique and here i mean it's it's all in japanese these came from japan but this shows you the frequencies that this guy can produce so up to 30,000. okay that is so far beyond what humans can do that's getting into whale songs you know and hey there are headphones that go up to 40 and beyond but look at the low end. Two. Two hertz. Ten times lower than what humans can even hear. I mentioned in my AirPod video, like, the original AirPods just can't play the super low stuff. It's like it doesn't exist. You don't even know what you're missing out on. And what's the best way to hear those low frequencies? Uh, you have a giant speaker. <laughs> Something that can just push big amounts of air at low frequencies. Well, it's some vintage boys. Some original K240 monitors. Made in Austria. Oh, AKG, why'd you have to be bought by Samsung? These are big, hey? These are 50 millimeter drivers. 70. 70 millimeter. That is humongous. And now let's look at these things again. So they've gone about it in like a, a really clever way. They're like, okay, we're making ultra bass headphones. They need to have the big diaphragm in there so that it can replicate those super lows. But then because they're so big, they want to get some distance from them. It's like big floor standing speakers. They sound best when you go and sit down on the couch, not if you've got your head right up against them. And then lo and behold, that's what these are doing. These are adding space between these humongous speakers for the tuning and then you know just make them pillows and I mean these are pillows and so talking about the ears again and like their limitation these are wide because I mean plain and simple you're sitting so far away from them so they have this big sound stage with just a floor if your music has big cranking 20 hertz wobbling bass you hear it and so you know what do I think of the sound of these they're, they're very colored these are not reference at all. <laughs> these would be terrible to mix music with because you'd swear all your music was crazy bassy. But these are the daddy of fun. I mean, it's like movies, right? Transformers isn't real, but it looks great and it's super fun to watch. You know, if you wanted real, you'd go and watch World War II documentaries or other historical things like that. Some crazy stuff has happened for realsies. And this is like a Transformers movie. It's just fun. If these are the only headphones I've used for the day, I love them. But then if I use, you know, some reference headphones and come back to these, I realize just how kind of colored they are. You know, then you listen to dubstep, filthy house tracks, go listen to some outcast. And then all of a sudden, I, I'm grinning ear to ear. And, um, you know, if these look comfortable, you have no idea. They are more comfortable than you can imagine. I when I put them on, I find I just drift away. And how they fit is a big thing for me. Order the LCD 2s. I adore my pair, they're amazing. I can't wear them for longer than half an hour. They just squeeze so hard. But I can smell the comments already. Hey, this is days before it's even been uploaded and I can still smell the comments. No, oh, mate. What about the Skull Candy Crushes? Like, if we're talking about big stinking bass, mate, then you gotta bring up the crushes. And you're right, I do. Right, careful, careful, okay. Yeah, it's true. If you want unsophisticated, ridiculous amounts of bass, you get the crushes. They fit like junk, because these don't angle enough, so like, literally, these bottom sections just push right in your head. And now people told me that they snap in the headband. Which is a real shame, because I, I thought they were built okay, and it turns out they're not built okay. <laughs> I know you guys want to hear, like, these versus the, the Jibber 1000s, right? And I do need to stress 
They, after the last video I did with these, people reported in to say that some of their speakers were damaged due to the recording that these made. So this is your warning, right? That you got, you, you turn it down, right? <laughs> My book cell. Oh my book cell. Unlistenable. What an amazing achievement. I think they're hilarious. Like I, I let friends try these all the time, and they just laugh. It's funny. It's funny. I like it because it's funny. Yeah, they're stupid. <laughs> they're not audio file grade in any any regard. And you know, as I said, they fit like crap and they like to break. But if you really are looking for like music destroying bass, well. <laughs> These do exist, but I bet a lot of you are now hopping online to find yourself a set of these. And um, it is, it is my honor to introduce just the favorite adult pastime, which is disappointment. Oh my book cell. St stay, why is- hang on, we need to use a sausage as a chalk. Put a guard sausage there. I'm very sorry to tell you that these are ridiculously rare, and I just got lucky when I got them. I- I bought these two years ago. They were just recommended to me online as a listing, and I was like, they look hilarious, I'll buy them. Like, the price was good, they came in their original box, and they came from Japan. I mean, that's just lucky me being near Japan that those listings just pop up really easily. But unfortunately, these were discontinued like 10 something years ago and they were just kind of ripped away I mean rumor I heard was that the factory got ruined with like floodwaters or something and it was just a loss and then they just stopped making them yes they're silly headphones no they're not naturally balanced you couldn't use them for mixing but people adored them for the people who wanted this experience there was nothing else on this planet and these are just ridiculously sought after now I, I just got so lucky and by doing a video about them I've just made this situation so much worse I'm so sorry I, I didn't know I'd have this kind of influence. I'm just talking about things I like. I didn't mean to destroy people's lives. But um, I know how thankful I am to have a pair of these, because yeah, these are, these are a collectible now. Come on, Sony, bring them back, mate. Come on, bring them back. Bring back the boxing gloves. People want it. People want Well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Shoot, thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names on here. I forgot to say that bit. Mate, one dollar a month. I do extra videos, although I do have extra free videos in garbage time. Sorry, the upload schedule is a bit spotty. It's just when I find time to do stuff, and that little red car's killing me. And I do have the float plane drum stream going on. So sorry, there's not a free option, but two bucks eighty a month, or twenty five for a whole year, and I play along the memes and yell at Frank. But for the one dollar patrons, we're gonna take a listen to the DR 11s. Yeah, and you know, talk about like, I really do love vintage headphones that they are far more exciting to me because it was when everything was being figured out and just, you know, weird relics like this that just don't make any sense anymore. So we're going to talk about these. So thanks so much for watching and mate, I'll see you all next time. Why is anyone else having this problem? Like, I, I just hear a noise and like, what the stink is this thing? Oi, what are you doing here? What's your name? You want to be friends? No, oh, okay, don't worry. Hey, it's the After Show. Thanks so much for supporting me. I super appreciate it. Sorry, there's crumlets of XB1000s everywhere. They just, it's everywhere. But we're taking a look at some Sonys from 1971, the DR11s, and just proof that Sony just hasn't ever known how to name things. They got lucky with the XB1000s. Cool name. These look wild, and you can see it's like the, the faux leather, but hard plat. It's like the dashboard of like a 70s Toyota a Corolla. I love this alien looking adjustment where they protrude up. <laughs> it's super, it's just such a cool looking design. I gotta say they nailed it. Left and right, that's how you know it's hi-fi. Um, it's got a really nice cable as well. I really, really do dig it. It's like a shoelace and naturally it ends in a big dingus because that was what listening was. It was like these were to be plugged into your home hi-fi bass and treble settings for each one. <laughs> you're gonna hear some recordings. I've left them in the bass position and you're still gonna be disappointed with the amount of bass. Spoilers. Yes, you can mix each left and right. Like that's weird, right? But 
in the early stereo days, it was like a gimmick. Like most people just had mono. And it's like, you know, early VR games come out and it's like they try and like use as many of the gimmicks as possible, not because it makes a better game. Well, you know, early stereo songs, they put all the drums in one side, all the guitar on the other side, and it was like backup vocals here, singer over here, and it was like that. It was like, yeah, to sell like, whoa, stereo, yeah. <laughs> and that's what people wanted. And so this is a way, so if there's too much bass in the left, you can just go, all right, a little less of that, or oh, I want more of Paul McCartney there. And you know, early Beatles tracks did a lot. I always found it really funny. If one earphone fell out, all I hear is Ringo go, D -d 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 uh, hard plastic. They're, they're cromulently comfortable because it's at least wide. It feels like a really thin one and they're not overly heavy. So of course they're going up against the old mate herders and take a listen. <laughs> Yes, it's an elevator simulator. <laughs> That's what I said, they're left in the base position, and it's like, you're still gonna be pretty disappointed. It's hard to say with vintage headphones if these are working properly. I've got some headphones from the 30s, and I picked up two different pairs, and they both sound completely different. Have they been caught in the rain? Has the dog weed on them? Has some kid spilt milk in them and dad just cleaned it out as best as he could? Were they destroyed and then rebuilt? And I just can't see any of the witness marks. Although, these are basically gonna be my referee for future like vintage headphone videos. Cause I mean, spoilers, they're like, I can't wait to talk about them. There's so much history for like how headphones have gotten to where we are. And my referee, AKG K240s, but notice, made in Austria and whew, 600 ohms. These are genuine vintage K240s. You can still buy K240s today. I think they're like 60 something ohms. They've really dialed it in. You know, and they're made in China now and AKG is basically dead and owned by Samsung. These are some of the hardest to drive headphones I own. This is what they were using in the 70s in the studios to make the music that we just see as absolutely legendary. As it's insane how much power these need. Forget the 600 ohms. These are low sensitivity. They're just so hard to drive. Even the low ohmed ones can be like that. But these are 1970s as well, so let's compare them. <laughs> So these are also about 50 years old and they still sound wonderful. <laughs> Maybe the DR11s always sounded a little bit poor. <laughs> but I mean, I guess like in the day, this would have been like audio enthusiasts. I mean, you know, I do have a lot of vintage headphones and a lot of them sound like this. Audio had a big glow up period in the late 70s, early 80s. And I just love how these look. I'm really warm to the K240s because when I was at music college, straight out of high school, these were the first sets of headphones of this caliber that I tried. And I remember looking at them going like, ooh, what are these things? And then, yeah, listening to music through them, I just couldn't pick it. I couldn't believe how much better these sounded than the cheap Sonys that I had at home. But I gotta tell you, I certainly do plug these in from time to time. Humans have this habit of just getting used to stuff. It's normal. By like the third moon landing, no one cared anymore. So, oh, we're doing this for a third time, are we? And that's the truth. Like, they didn't even air or broadcast much of the launch until the spaceship exploded. Then it was interesting again. And sometimes it's fun just to do, you know, a palate reset. When I was drinking iced coffees every single day, they just tasted like water after a while. And then I didn't drink them for months and had another sip and realized that, yeah, okay, they have 60 grams of sugar. That's really sweet. And sometimes listening to music through these headphones, especially vintage music, like some old Stan Getz or Miles Davis or something, it has a vibe. And knowing that, for a lot of people, this is how their music sounded. Because this is what the equipment could re replicate. Listen to the first ever shellac records. Hi-Fi, they ain't. But that was Hi-Fi at the time. Yeah, I, I love perspective. It really gets me. Well, thanks so much for supporting me. Th thank you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the sausage chuck away. That was from the... That was it. Is it easy does it? Easy does it? Easy does it? Easy does it? Okay. Oh, is that one of them? Uh, 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 u
calculators, mate. So I can all hear you clapping and cheering with Boo, mate, boo, calculators suck. I don't care. Now I'm gonna unsub, resub, so I can unsub again. To which I cheerily reply with You sit down right now, mate. You're gonna get your freak show. You'll see a nugget. Have I let you down before? Besides, this is all Clint's fault from LGR. <laughs> We've following that channel for oh, 10 years? And he's covered the handheld calculator wars. Early computers just crunched numbers. That's all they did. And a calculator was a pocketable version of that. I mean, you could argue that the smartphone and all that business traces back to these handheld boys right here. So many modern computer companies getting their start with calculators and then moving to the big desktop boys. Clint's gotten doomed to run on one of these. Like, <laughs> it's, yeah, calculator world be deep, mate. So it's fun to think that this is like the ultra history of the PC. And like, it goes all the way back to like the Abacus, which is just a name that I enjoy. That's a nice early way to keep track of numbers, mate. Just slide some beads a bit. But I want to stick to counting machines. And um, this first, I don't know if this is gonna fit. Oh man! <laughs> No! No, it doesn't! Oh, the poor iPad! I don't know what year this is, but I'm guessing it's got to be 50s and earlier. Down here are the digits, and um, it's it's not working right. Oh, a little bit? No, the handle doesn't work properly. It's called a Burrows. It weighs a ton. Look, the casing is broken, and look how it's cast! It's like a transmission housing on an old F100 truck. <laughs> it is so heavy! This thing was really cheap. I don't need one of these. And maybe it'd be fun to pull open one day, see if there's something very simple wrong with it, I'm guessing not. Not a good example that, lad. I mean, we would call that in the trade, thrashed. Best way to get a good example of what they look like and how they did things, mate, find a brochure. Oh, baby, sell me this beige nugget right here. I think this is 60s. I'm just gonna have a guess. Ask God, mate, for technical progress in the office. Oh man, it's got red and black ink. It's almost as high tech as one of those tri-color Bic pens. High speed adding listing machine. Mate, I'd believe it. Look how aerodynamic it looks. Cuts through the office air like a like a big brick, really. Oh, mate, read these stunning features. Escoda adding and listing machines add. Whoa. Subtract. Whoa. Above and below zero. Those are dimensions I didn't know existed. Oh, there's more. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft Excel, eat your heart out, mate. Well, there you go. That's how they made big stinky invoices back then. Looks like a giant phone. What a stunner. So I made sure to find one out with a big PC name to prove my point earlier. Mate, it's a HP. Look at this lovely leather guy it's in. I don't even know if it is actually leather. And... Yeah. The Hewlett Packard 12C. Now, I know it works. It turns on, and it's got really good memory because that's what I put into it like stinking ages ago, the first time I tried to use it. And, and there's the little thing, like I tried to use it. I mean, I just wanted to do some, you know, two plus two is two. <laughs> Obviously, I don't know how to use it, right? I'm sure someone could just go like, oh, just, it's right there, you stinking idiot. I mean, what, is FC? No, no, okay, the F won't go away now. What, do, no, it's a G now, star, no? I don't know how to use it. I don't know how to do simple two plus two addition. Like, a more? A more? Oh no, now it's a one. Um, oh, um. Oh, that just turns it off. I, I can't even turn it on and off again to get rid of the five. The eggs. Oh no, now the one's over there and. <laughs> Hell, st stop. A more? A more? Oh, what was that? It I amorted too much. I mean, I'm guessing like this was trying to do a lot of really crazy scientific stuff in what is like very slim and compact. It's super light. It runs on like button cells. Oh, it tells you how to amort. But this is literally a simple calculator that I don't know how, I'm gonna try once more. On, oh, look at that mess. Okay, let's just get rid of that. Um, um, uh, um, uh. Uh, oh, I know. Let's divide by zero. Let's let's wipe it. Yeah, did, did that do it? Five plus five plus ten. Do oh, with there. Plus no. Let's times that by two. Oh, what was that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I give up. I'm more. So you guys are cussing my channel. You want a nugget. Well, I found one for you. So I bought this one. A, a big part of it is the aesthetic. It is beautiful. I don't know if it works and I don't care because I real I bought it for the name. Feast your eyes on the nugget boy. That is the Zenny. <laughs>
Now, I know electronics like age over time and they turn this color. I bet you it was meant to be white, but we <laughs> you can just feel the budget. It weighs nothing, and I mean it. It is a very simple calculator. I'd expect nothing more from the Zenny. I mean, just think this is the 811th go at it, mate. I'd hate to try a Zenny one. <laughs> you know, it's an old boy, because oh, it's made out of crap. Oh no. Did I break my zenny? It's it's fine. <laughs> oh, that's corroded. Oh no. But you know it's an old boy because it takes four. <laughs> I have a whole army of brand new boys. My brand new boys, you better work in my zenny. I can see already, it's like one of those green vacuum whatever displays. You know, it would be akin to like an old microwave. Okay. Oh no. Guys, the roughest, cheapest nugget I bought for this episode doesn't work. <laughs> it's gonna... It's... Come on! It's, it's like I'm rescuing a dying animal here. <laughs> Dude, it worked! It worked! I did it! I've done it! I've resurrected the Zenny! Come on, yes! <laughs> That was a technique I invented just that very set. I'm gonna leave this off because I might have to finagle it some more. <gasps> Guys, we can use the Zenny. Two plus two. It, it HP outclassed by the dead Zenny. Oh, I actually like the, the display. It's reasonably bright. Look at that number four. Oh, I can clear it. Okay, what about 110.9 times 23. Two th whatever, point one. That's a big number, and I don't care if it's right or not. Alright, do they all work? Oh, uh, hang on, I ran out of- hang on. The- every number works. Oh, did you give me an extra nine there, mate? That I didn't ask for? Oh, it's because it's stuck, it's okay. Oh, the Zenny. <gasps> my brand new nug. It's not brand new, it's actually- get- give me my- yeah, give them back. Did you like that technique there, eh? Oh, there's Zenny everywhere. So, this last one is the golden child. It's the one that I actually bought that made me look for the other ones, including the Zenny. And I wanted like a proper professional desktop calculator. I mean, the ones in the 80s and 90s, mm -hmm, look at those beige beauties. But I was looking for one that had something special. 1971 Singer Frieden EC 1118. And right. It, it barely fits and it's fine. A beautiful thing. You absolutely need to plug it into the wall. I had to have this because of the display. Are you ready for Nixie tubes? <laughs> yes. Since this is the calculator that started my little collection here, this is all technically Tecmon's fault because he introduced me to Nixie tubes where each number is a filament. And you can see the numbers sit raised up or lower down. Like Tecmon covered these and then like, you know, sharing that in Monsters Inc. That's what the numerals are. Like they're all Nixie tubes. And in 1971, this was a $600 calculator. You put that in today's money? That is a $4,000 calculator. Oh, and it's got Nixies. But check this, a handle. <laughs> So you can just lug your big singer about. It does the simple guy stuff. Two plus two be the four. And you ready? You can just get rid of it. HP. I, could, I can just do this all day and just watch the numbers turn up. It's so stinking neat. When I'm picking up something high end like that, I really love trying to get the manual. Treasure trove. I mean, it literally tells you how to use it properly. 12 digits. Decimals, those weird knobs here, that's so you can move the decimal point across. This switch here is so you can round numbers up and down. Then, you know, it's got the program dial, which just freaks me out. I'm not a maths guy, I study jazz. But doing some reading up on this, it was made like with these extra features in it for you know, proper heavy business users. Constant position in this mode, the second entry in multiplication or division becomes a constant. Uh-huh. Whoa! Look at it go, man! It's showing you the, like, problem. These crappy numbers are two crappy numbers. Let's make it one crappy number. That's how they did it! Whoa, invoices. Business. I mean, I know basic calculators have just been replaced by phones, which is great. It's just a quick bunk and you've got a calculator, eh? Take that, teachers. You always told us, oi, you won't have a calculator in your pocket all the time. But I really do love things that still do the job that they set out to do 
perfectly. This thing works absolutely 100%. And as just a quick addition guy in the house, like this is so much fun. You just walk up, turn it on and off you go. And it's why I love vintage headphones so much. It's so much fun just experiencing just how things were back then. And maybe you find that it never stopped being good. Oh, come with me, heavy beast. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here, mate, because one dollar a month, I direct two videos. Now on the whole vibe of like vintage things still doing the job they always did with just that bit of style and flair that's timeless. This is, a, I believe, a 70s Polaroid SX70 camera. Yeah, what a beast. So yeah, I, I want to show you some of the epic photos I've taken and just talk about something that's super old and still just super captivating. So thanks so much, mate. I'll see you all next time. And there we go. One half of the Frankie. You look great. You smell awful there. Hey, it's the after show. Thanks so much for supporting me. Oh, I really appreciate you, mate. Only with your incredible patronage could I have found the Zenny, crumbs of which are still all over the place. <laughs> and I know a bunch of you watch the after show first. Well, the Zenny's not gonna make any sense, mate. You know, if anything, it's even better. But as a kid, I've always had this fascination with Polaroids, just in a way, just shoot a photo out and off you go. Cause I remember, you know, having family outings, we take like disposable cameras, you gotta wait for the photo to come back. And then you realize it sucks. Dad left the cap on or something. <laughs> You know? And like, yeah, I had a Polaroid as a kid and I just loved it. it was, and you hand it to people. The film is expensive, but it's just, I don't know, there was something valuable about it. You didn't want to waste a shot. It's actually something amazing about modern phones is that we do take photos of everything. And what that does is documents more of everyday life. Funny enough, in history, that's the thing we're missing out on the most. No one bothered to write down how they went to the toilet 400 years ago. But it's my Polaroid SX70. And I got this like remanufactured or fully reconditioned Brooklyn film camera. Um, I'm not gonna flip this over because it's got my details on it, serial numbers and all that sort of thing, you know, they put a warrant in these and stand by it. It's not cheap, but like, this is not easy to use. Like, let me tell you. And so I just wanted to know that I wasn't like fighting the machine. Like it, like it wouldn't give me good photos because it needed something. It's like, it's not giving me good photos because I suck and I don't know how to use it properly. I have been playing with like new modern ones, which are way cheaper and way easier to use. But, um, you know, I wanted to have the daddy. I love when this sits on the table and friends go, what is that? And I'm like, good question. And you just pull it, bam, it's a camera. How neat is this? So what this guy up here is, is the sonar autofocus. So if I hold down the button, watch it. <laughs> How sonar autofocus and you look down the viewfinder and you'll see it focus as well that guy's for the brightness and darkness and that is your enemy like you got to become friends with that thing to actually figure out like where it's supposed to be i'm still learning i believe it's got film in it but i'm going to take a quick snapshot of the rig here <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna leave that face down because with darkness they work better. How cool is that? I don't even know where the battery is in this thing. Load more film, you press that, that folds down, that's where the film goes in. It's super simple. And absolutely, Polaroid is still making it. Why would you lose on this cash cow, hey, if you're wondering what they're up to? Because like I said, it is really hard to get a good photo out of this thing because you gotta dial in all the the sensitive light stuff yourself. And honestly, it's what the big fun is. If someone owns one of these and they've handed you like a perfectly in focus, bright, colorful photo out of one of these, they're a genius and they've worked at that. So I'm telling you, the first, I don't know, 10 photos I spat out, black, nothing on them. <laughs> yeah, nothing. It wasn't that it looked like crap. I, it was, they were just blinks. And yeah, I wasn't using it properly. <laughs> what I love is you can still get flash modules for these. People make them new. I left mine at home, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I love seeing something so vintage still having 100% support. Like this has just been back from being refurbished. And I love how it goes back. Push on that and then She's done. They even sell like little 3D printed um, holders, which is super fun. Like to put all your masterpieces in. So let me dazzle you with some of the magnificent photos I've taken just kind of around the house in the backyard. This is what it spits out when you first put in the film, which is fine. Um, here's Frank in a fatty hammock. Black and white, obviously, just adds that texture commonly found in Frank's poop. That's a tree outside and you can see it. I mean, it was bright outside. It was like a crazy blue day and um, that's that's what you get. That's a bag. 
That this no lie was the first photo I actually got to work. I was sick of lining up really nice Frank shots. I swear, whatever, bag, clack, and I got this. <laughs> so, oh, you always remember your first. Oh, secret hidden character on the show, mate. The floats. Yes, they are stinking up the house and hanging out. They will get a video at some point. I am going to talk more about vintage headphones coming up because they are super funny. Like, if you want the fun recordings against the HD 600s, vintage is where you go. Look, there's a color Frank of Frank hiding her head and I didn't get her in shot properly. Treasured memories. And then there's like a, a bigger shot of her enclosure. Frank's being a fatty over there. Wow, such winners. <laughs> and just think, these are the ones I didn't throw out. At least a pack's worth have just been thrown out as just blanks. Speaking of which, this is the one I just took. It should be color. Let's have a smell. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think that needs a minute. Time lapse. I literally waited about 20 minutes there. And uh, let, here you go. Whoa, there's another winner. Look, you can almost make out the one grit and the duck. Um, yeah, this is <laughs> this is usually what you get. So it's hard. It is hard work. As I said, if someone hands you a beautiful, I mean, guys, this bag photo is starting to look pretty dang good all of a sudden, huh? <laughs> Uh, but that's the fun of it. And man, Polaroid are just rolling in the money of people just throwing this stuff away because it ain't easy, mate. I'm not keeping this one. So that's my quick little toy share there. And you know, you, you know, just leave. Things made for kids. I actually opened this in one of my Patreon after shows. And I mean, ages seven to 12, well mate, I had a ball. I even ripped all the limbs off and basically just have a big Frank now. <laughs> Perfect resemblance, mate, it's basically the same concept. That was like a cool slam and awesome toy, right? But <laughs> a lot of the kids market is just where companies dump garbage. And like, mate, it's super important for like kids to get a hold of technology, hey? You know, not every kid can afford like a slam and iPod you know and like it totally has to be like a big hexagon full of plastic waste mate like that's the only way i'm gonna accept an mp3 play mate for kids mate is again a big hexagon that's like a plastic waste hand grenade mate like when you open it it's just it goes everywhere mate my dreams have come true look it's a big hexagon full of plastic waste this thing is huge and it's not gonna fit it's a barbie thing oh the reflections are bad <laughs> oh my book so <laughs> mate the mid thousands were all about mp3 players and everyone had to have a go including barbie this is an official thing super cool three in one gift pack so like there's just junk everywhere going on like the mp3 plays here apparently and then like this is the deco pack and the fashion pack so i'm assuming that these used to be sold separately until people didn't buy them and then they've just gone oh no mate now our warehouses are full of junk no one wants quick just smash them all together in a hexagon and send it I mean, it's got a handle so you can carry it straight to the bin so cute Clip-on charm. Well, mate, this whole time I thought charm was like, you know, listening to people in conversations and giving eye contact and like, you know, just being a good person. No, mate, turns out you just put this junk on you and there, you're charming. On the go, clip-on purse. Men have pockets, women have purses. And I used to think that purses seemed like a bit of a handicap to carry around a bag like that until I realized you women are hiding snacks in those things. You guys always have gum on hand. We've been doing it all wrong. Yeah, look, it's explaining each separate module because, yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm thinking that these were separate products. Snap on beads earrings. What? Oh, wow. <laughs> Number one, it comes with like in-ear style dirty buds. Fantastic, I bet they sound great. It's got holes in it, so you can hang crap from them. Mate, that's everything I want with my headphones is just to have junk jangling from it at all times. This thing is from 2007 and that just totally makes sense. That was peak iPod MP3 days. Like the iPhone was just coming out and it was like, boom the smartphone era began. And I find the tackiest crap tends to come out in 2007. It was like the last big I'm looking at this big hexagon full of plastic waste and I'm going, I bet you I can hold all of it in my tightly cupped hands. That is my bet. Th there's gonna be nothing in these. Can you believe no one bought this? Breaking the seal on this puppy. Yeah, and look, these little moduly bits, nothing. 
Nothing, just waste. Ah, oh, there's even more propping up the hexagons. All right, we're gonna get to the nugget itself. We gotta open up its accessories. In. Ow, I cut myself. Ooh. Ew, oh, hang on, is that nothing? Oh no, no, <laughs> excuse me, that is part of the product. I thought that was just, like, waste. Oh, it goes everywhere. <laughs> yep, yeah, it's a plastic waste hand grenade. That's all I can say, because, like, these are going to go everywhere. I told you! What are these? Oh, it's just more plastic nothing! Like, <laughs> all this ink printing in plastic for something I didn't even know! Oh no, my special Barbie code. It's now shown to the world. I'm pretty sure it's expired. Oh man, are you kidding me? <laughs> they are everywhere. Look, there's one with the duck. It can just stay in there. All that packaging, and this is what you get. <laughs> I mean, my MP3 player just needs boots. Jeez. Oh, jeez. It's the main event. I don't even know what the MP3 player looks like yet. I don't know. It's like a weird lunchbox for nuggets. All right. What else could be in here? A, oh, a dock. Wow. That's actually pretty neat. Oh, uh, an another one of these because they're meant to be sold separately. Um. A, a giant clothes peg, bud bits, oh, Manuel, wah, oh jeez, <laughs> it just keeps going, oh, an insulation disc for, for junk that I never want to see, hey look, I found some screenshots of that crap, there you go, bask in the obsolete glory, I, oh, more of these, here, here it is, oh, <laughs> there you go, like, it's, oh, Okay, <laughs> there it is, right? You know, it's funny, when you put this accessory on, it makes it more uncomfortable to hold. It's actually nicer to hold like this. Is this SD? Whoa, that genuinely nearly took out my eye. Oh, the stink buds. Gold-plated tip, Bobby, you're, you're going nuts. <laughs> They smell like strawberries. <laughs> That's interesting. Better than the burnt plastic smell I'm used to. All right, which piece of plastic waste am I meant to accessorize them with? Got the tactical handbag, shoes. Oh, hang on. Oh, I see. It's got a front case and a back case. <laughs> You just need more plastic, guys. Let's, let's accessorize. Oh, I see. Everything's mounted to this piece of crap, which then goes on this piece of crap. You just need plastic on plastic. How do you get these crappy ones out? Get out. Oh, no. <laughs> I broke it. Oh, no. Now I can't put this cool Barbie in. Well, maybe I still can. Yeah, I've ruined it. It just got... <laughs> At least got to put the boots on and the tactical handbag. Oh, awesome. Can you see, see that big bit of sprue hanging off of it? It means it doesn't even go in. Get in there. Oh, wow. No, I can't even put the handbag in. Wait. Oh, I got it. No, this is absolute crap. And like, <laughs> big companies wonder why people don't like them very much. Oh, finally. Tactical handbag. Looks good. I like how they could have made this the boots, so you take off the boots to get that out. But no, that would actually take engineering and cleverness. It doesn't even stick out far enough. <laughs> you betcha it will not fit in the keyboard. <laughs> oh, stupid chunk. Oh, that's good. Okay, Barbie actually gets a little bit of credit here. The MP3 player is actually called Barbie Girl, and it has Barbie Girl on it. <laughs> Oh, I just realized there's no screen or anything. It's like a really terrible iPod shuffle. Power on. Bluetooth mode. Mmm, this is my baby girl. Auxiliary mode. Don't say it in public. Oh, it's crunchy. Oh, goody. <laughs> Would you believe that this is absolute junk? How do you turn it on? That's how you know it's a nugget if you if you don't know how to turn it on. Oh no, oh, I'm an idiot. I really, it comes with a dock. I should have just used this with the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> Plug in the earbuds to turn it on. Oh wait, I've done that then. Um, uh oh, I think the battery's cooked. Come on, Barbie. Oh, that fits terrible. This is plugged into the wall now. Come on, Barbie. Can you not play while charging? Oh, you piece of crap. No, I can't get it to play. It won't do it. 
Oh, yeah, what an absolute pile of junk. I gotta know what's in here now. Sneaky hidden one. Oh, goody. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's just a ribbon cable. That's fun. Come on, where's the Samsung chip? I know there's one. Oh, it's not a Samsung chip. Amazing. All right, there's just plastic waste everywhere currently and one savior. All right, you know, the MP3 player is terrible, but it's okay. We can make it up with the stink phones. We'll have a proper listen first, all right? Don't want to be unfair. <laughs> okay. Um... They're pretty stinking bassy! <laughs> oh wow! Normally they're just nothing but mids or they're really trebly. Um, these are fat and stinky. The top end sucks and they sound like I I would tolerate these. Like desert island situation. You know, it's either this or a speaker system made of coconuts and monkey feces. I would wear these and go, mate, we're doing okay. Let's see how noisy they get. <laughs> They're noisy, but they're not loud. They got really noisy and really, really smelly. <laughs> I mean, they just, oh, they, they stink. Looks like a chicken leg now, to be honest. And mate, look, there's one more accessory, and I know who needs a bit of prettying up. So I says to Mabel, I says, like, I'm not talking to Tony anymore. Tony's the bad man. I don't like the bad man. But we're gonna make this all pretty and yeah, beauty, beauty makeover. Pretty, pretty one grit. So maybe while not in my tightly cupped hands, I was basically right. <laughs> I like, oh, it is literally landfill. <laughs> Well, I'm glad no one bought that thing because I'm going to recycle all that junk properly. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. A huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names on here, mate, because $1 a month, I do extra videos. Although, if you're looking for extra free videos, I've got garbage time. I'm sorry about the slow uploads. I swear I'm working on things. It's a bit of an extras channel, so, you know. I do it when I can. And I do drum streams on Float Plane, half the price of Twitch, but double the mess. But for you $1 patrons, uh, I'm gonna have a look at these. I was really surprised to see Ineos style Dirty Buds with the Barbie thing, and that Apple actually had an official pair. I've never tried them, these are brand new. Yeah, they weren't cheap either. And I never saw them around. Most people just tended to use the buds that came with their phone and then get something better. But that's what we're gonna look at and made. I'll see you all next time. Frank's looking real suspicious. Like you're being purposely nonchalant. Look at me. I'm just a humble princess wandering past. Oh, is there a poo back here, Frank? Oh, I bet. Hey, it's the after show. Thanks so much for supporting me. I stink and appreciate you so I can play with stuff like this. <laughs> Genuine Apple in-ears. I've never seen these in person. I'd only saw them on the online store. I tracked down a pair to use. I mean, they've been superseded by the AirPod Pros, which is cool, I love my Pros. Um, but I was always very interested in these. It comes from being a drummer and just having earplugs on hand that can play music was just really handy. Oh, is that a case? Or... Yeah, they're just in-ears. That's it. <laughs> I mean, I hope they're good because these would be fun to pair up with my vintage iPods. Opening up anything brand new, it's just really fun. Well, I mean, when it's meant to be something good, not that Barbie thing from this week, that was terrible. Oh, I see. It's a Bud Bits capsule. Oh, they meant to be that color. <laughs> Weird. Wait, is there one missing? Has someone been in here? So, oh, these aren't new at all. Someone's been in here. <laughs> oh, d oh, I hate you, eBay. I've had these for like two years waiting for the deck. Ah, stink it. Still, neat Bud Bits capsule and the center is translucent. Shame it's not actually new, I guess. I mean, just. Yeah, someone's already ripped that. Ooh, what's that? Oh, inner mesh bits. Oh. Apple is really good at the documentation that comes with stuff. Like, you know, they just are. Ah, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, inner filter bits, like mesh cap, that's cool. That's really cool stuff to include. It makes, usually headphones get all gunked up, but then they sound like junk. Oh, these the questionable boys. Oh, they're filthy. I thought these were new. Oh, 
Buying online honestly sucks nowadays. It's like, like a lot of the time doing for like buying stuff for videos, I'll go to JB Hi-Fi. I'll actually go to a retail store because I know what I'm getting. Like I'm starting to think that online shopping's peaking. They are tiny though. They are really, really small and dirty. Ugh. Great, I get to sanitize these before I use them. Come here, Diabli. Have a proper smell. They sound all right. They sound all right. I mean, I think they sound better than the EarPod ones. I really do prefer that silicone fit. You know, that's really important for me, how they fit. Um, this cable is awful. It's everything that touches it, so you get that noise through it. I forget the term, microphonic or something like that. Yeah, and now learning that these are used and missing bits, I thought I was buying brand new ones. Who knows if this is how they're meant to sound. I get, you, know, you just can't peg the history of these. Some of me and my siblings, we always put our headphones through the wash. Happened all the time. And that's, you know, I wanted new ones. You know what I'm gonna do for you? I mean, they were suspiciously cheap. Since I have no attachment to these, let's try and blow them up and we'll curse eBay the whole time. All right, for, for those of you playing at home, it's right at this point that I noticed that I never press play on the recorder <laughs> Heaps of stuff's actually gone wrong for this week's video. This is way later than I wanted to film because stuff didn't work out. And there you go. I didn't press play on Oh wow, the audio's gonna suck. <laughs> Hold him up to the iPhone. There you go. That's what you're missing out on. Oh, my pox selling everything to make up for the truly terrible sound. I'm so, why am I putting the microphone in front of me? To apologize for the truly awful sound, let's stress out the Lafonies again. Why won't you die? I swear one of them died and then I pulled on the cable and it came back to life. Oh, Lafoni, you're the la worst. We'll see you another day. Well, sorry for the awful audio quality. Um, and sorry these weren't brand new. Oh, this week just isn't my week, is it? Well, thanks for supporting me regardless. Thanks for nothing, Frank. My puck sells. Just get out. At least Frankie's being interesting. Morning. It's actually nighttime, but it's morning for you. Yeah. Frank's a midnight lady. Look at, look at these pupils. She's so ready to just make heaps of noise and bad smells. Frank, don't lick the glass. Don't. No, I said don't. Frank, don't. It's been fun. So a lot of folks have asked about my pair, you know, how are they going? Especially after a year now, and especially after the fact that my uh, first pair were faulty. Go suss the video if you want the full spiel, but I believe it was the gizmos and the noise cancelling out putting gibberish. It took me ages to get another pair of these because they were sold out of the fugly green ones. I wanted the fugly green. And I finally got another pair thanks to the Apple Store at Rundle Mall. Thanks so much, guys. And to prove that I've been using these a lot, you can see the filth. <laughs> <laughs> I've left the filth intact to show them that absolutely I've been using these heaps. And now you all want to know how it's going. But like you might have guessed from the title of this video that it's not gone all that well, eh? I know in the last video about these, I didn't really give them a full review. I mean, although I did go through all the stuff that I wanted to, you know, big stuff that I liked, stuff that I didn't. It was just overshadowed by the sadness. Sound-wise, I think they're awesome. I know audiophiles aren't fans at all because you don't need to spend this kind of money for this kind of sound. I've been playing around with the T60 RPs, not even for a video, this is just for me, and I love them. The wood makes them so light and they feel amazing, and you could get two pairs of these for the price of the Maxes. But these guys aren't in the same category. For instance, these are critical listening headphones. Open backs too, meaning all of the outside noise is allowed to go right inside. Your roommate's listening to S Club 7 again? Mate, you're gonna hear all of it. These are for sitting down in your easy chair and taking a music the same way you would say a movie, giving all of your attention, no phone in your hand, all glued to the content. These are convenience headphones about making the experience as easy as possible. Just put them on and off it goes. But mate, these are just headphones too. I mean, like, you, you just put them on, right? 
So I don't get it, what's so hard about that, eh? Well, these would like an amplifier to sound their best. Absolutely, you can run these out of your iPhone with one of those dingus dongles. But I don't listen to music very loud, and I can happily stand the volume of these at maximum out of an iPhone. <laughs> Forget ohms, man, these are just greedy. And what I noticed at those volumes, the top end was thin and nasty. It was like the hats were chopping at my ears. Ow, don't attack me. But out of a really nice amplifier, the high volumes, it was way more even and smoother. Yeah, they just want nice equipment. Well, these just want a Bluetooth signal and they do the amplification themselves. And I mean, that's the thing, on the topic of needing an amp, a lot of high-end headphones are insanely power hungry. If you ran them off of a battery, you wouldn't like long at all so Apple had to do like a really big juggle because they're really thin <laughs> look at look at that <laughs> And they're still cavernous. It has to talk over Bluetooth, has to be the amplifier, has to have electronic noise cancelling on top of it, and yet they're thin and have 20 hours of battery. Look how deep the ear cups are. Like, you know, forget how thin they are. They're just cavernous holes for your ears to live in. It's even got adaptive EQ. It's constantly listening and adjusting the EQ to suit the area. And they are dang comfortable. Yeah, they're heavy, but all the weight is in the headband, which is stainless steel, which acts as an adjustment point because stainless steel is springy. Lots of little hinges in here and swivels that make them match up with your greasy face. This is a really weird looking headband, but dang it, it works. And the noise cancelling is sublime. I mean, I've gotten dumped into a rental house under the airplane landing line. So it's just jumbo planes from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. So in other words, I can't always use open bags. It is obscene how loud planes are. And wow, these cut out so much of the noise. Quite often I just wear these as electric earmuffs. Like literally, I just want to go for a walk and think in peace and quiet and with that bonus that people just leave you alone because <laughs> ovaries really sell that message to people. Or uh, that stupid case that this thing came with, the bra, the nappy, whatever you want, um, I've never used it once. <laughs> After filming the last video, over a year ago, I just threw it over my shoulder and immediately lost it. Good riddance. You don't need that thing. So wow, mate, it sounds like it's been a dream gravy boat and there's been no frustrating downsides at all. There are times where these are too clever for their own good. Like, I make these videos on Macs. You know, funny enough, the first episodes of this channel were made on Windows. With a machine I built myself, thank you. I've come running and screaming from Windows. Like, Mac for content creation is just genius. So yeah, I have a lot of Macs now. And say I'm listening to a podcast on my phone and doing some boring office work on a Mac, I will get constant pop-ups saying, Are you a Apple Macs in your boy? Are you a Apple Macs in Do you want to connect? Do you want to connect? Do you want to connect? Even when I click it off, it disappears again immediately and it won't stop. It got so annoying that I went into the Bluetooth settings and unsynced them from my Mac, but then I realized I unsynced it from my whole iCloud account. <laughs> so a lot of my frustrations with these comes from how I like to listen to music. And like, here's the weird twist for me. I never have music in the background when I'm doing stuff. Never, because I concentrate too hard on it. <laughs> I was a full-time musician before COVID, right? And so, you know, every single day for me was just listening to music, for other people. Every waking hour of my day was listening to music, so when I didn't have to, I choose not to. You know, I can't break those habits, so whenever I have background music on, all I do is focus on the music and I can't get any work done. <laughs> it's just how I am. I find when I do listening, I'll set aside some time. Okay, for 45 minutes, I'm gonna listen to an album in quiet, and I can be randomly inspired to do this, where it's like, oh, oh, oh quickly, I wanna listen to some music. I'll run, I'll grab some headphones, and I'll sit down, and then I'll have this stinking issue. Yeah. I just can't sync them. It just won't. And that's me like wiping them from my iCloud. That's me like holding down the buttons to reset them. The, the whole McGill. And honestly, by the time I finally get these working, I don't care anymore or I have to get back to the work that I was doing. This isn't just an AirPod thing. Lots of Bluetooth headphones have done this to me. So many of them assume that they're the only Bluetooth headphones you own, which is true of most folks. But when you have a few Bluetooth headphones, they can start fighting for power for your music and can start playing out of random pairs. Like, and another thing about these being too clever for their own good, they have sensors so they know when they're on someone's greasy head, right? I like to keep headphones I'm regularly using on a stand. It's fun to display stuff. These idiots will think they're being used. And so my iPhone will just send calls, podcasts, anything to it. And it kills the battery as well because they think they're being used. So yeah, I don't, I don't keep these on a stand anymore. When I come home, I go, well, I'm home. 
on the word of batteries, yes, you just need to have a spot or two in the house where you can plug these in. When you come home, you plug them in, you get a routine going to keep them juiced up. But I like to rotate between quite a few pairs, especially vintage pairs. Oh, mama mia. And every now and then, I'll just treat these like any old pair of headphones and I'll forget to charge them. It's so annoying to have that spontaneous, wow, I actually want to listen to music and I'll come around and grab, no, nah, not today, buddy, they're flat. <laughs> I guess I'm just sick of everything have a battery in it now. Like my toothbrush has a battery. You know, like the Skull Candy Crushers that ruined people's speakers with the recordings they made for this channel, sorry. When I did that episode, I had to charge them before filming because they sat for a week and they were dead. Oh man, and then there's Siri notifications. I remember being a self-employed musician and using my AirPods, Apple Watch, all of that to never miss calls and or texts and be right in touch with my work. To be honest, nowadays there are so many spam calls and spam texts that the phone is almost becoming useless no one cares anymore it's just free reign I could get 10 text messages of just fake spam like trying to get me to click links I never answer calls anymore there's just no point my rule is you ring I don't pick up you leave a voicemail I'll ring you back and the worst part about these was it was just beaming all of them straight to my ears I'll be listening to music you know stop right now thank you for I hate that Siri noise, like You have a message from Scam that says your Amazon account is being deleted. Yes, there are things and settings that turn them off, but by default, they're set to on. Or stuff like, I'm, I love going for big walks. That's why I like these so much. And maybe I'll have Google Maps running as just like a compass so I can just check to make sure I'm on the right track. And I always have the voice turned off. Don't talk to me. But then Siri will just give the directions instead. Half of my last walk was wasted trying to make Siri go away. Oh my pot, sir! And I swear, after the full resets I keep having to do to keep these synced, a lot of those settings get flipped on to on again. All the gizmos really can just get in the way of listening to music. Well, the sound might be good, but the microphone is the stink. I, I've never heard a good mic from any Bluetooth things. Look, here's some KZs. Wow, it's got a microphone. It's like this one time, mate, I had this genius idea. I'm like, mate, I'm gonna make water filters. Like, people pay so much for them, hey? And I'm like, it's filtering water. How hard could it be? You just run it through something. Like, I don't want to spend any money though, so I'm just going to use old socks wrapped around a Bunnings hose, mate, and I'm just going to call it filtered, and I don't see any dramas at all. It's like I've launched my bottled sock water business, and mate, business is like booming. I can't believe it, mate. So much activity going on. Like, I can't even keep up, mate. As soon as I put fresh socks on, mate, I'm going to take them off again, do another batch, hey? Get the Bunnings hose out, mate. Uh, but like, you know, confession, like, you know, I'm, I'm just giving this stuff away, hey? Like, I'm not asking for any money. And like all the customers just seem to be all these stray dogs, eh? Hey? Like they're just kind of, you know, playing around with the garden hose, eh? Hey? I'm not doing good, guys. I'm not doing good at all. Could you tell which ones were like tens of dollars versus almost a thousand dollars? Man, that's a cable for you. That's just what a cable can do. So yeah, Bluetooth headphones, you might pick them up and find that they're flat, they beam spam straight to your ears, maybe you just can't get them synced to nothing. But these aren't the reasons that I'm done with them. The, the reason is tiny, but it defeats a lot of purposes. While I'm going for walks, one of the hinges goes click, 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 It doesn't happen all the time, but it, it can be either ear cup. And when you've created this, you know, incredible space of quiet, thanks to that amazing noise cancelling, it is very noticeable. I mean, yeah, they're filthy dirty and I don't use them in their case, but I don't abuse these. But I kept using them. I mean, living under the planes and sitting around at home, it was okay. Until the clicking even started with slight head movements at home. <laughs> and you're all thinking, well, I should just get on the Apple and work out another pair. But this is my second pair already. I have 70s headphones that are still doing their job perfect. And these aren't even headphones that you can keep forever. The batteries that are in here will die. And not all Bluetooth headphones can work properly from just a cable. The Skull Candy Crushers, for instance, you can't get that stinky bass with just the auxiliary cable plugged in. It needs to have the bats working. And, you know, thanks to this channel, I've had a lot of experience of all these sort of different Bluetooth guys. And after all the syncing issues, the dead batteries, the crappy apps you need to use them with, Sony. Honestly, 
I'm really cooked on Bluetooth headphones. So I've been using Bluetooth headphones since AirPods 2. And then this channel allowed me to play with cool cabled ones. And at no point do I get frustrated about having to plug this in. I thought I would. I thought I'd just turn into a full convert for the wireless life. And every time I pick up a cable, I go, oh, that's old school. No, I pick up these and go, oh, a cable. That's reliable. A good cable doesn't make any noise. A good cable doesn't weigh a ton. It doesn't get all tangled. It's just reliable. Guys, we're gonna bring back the headphone jack. It's been a fun experiment, everyone, but we're gonna bring back the headphone jack. And a big part of this decision is that I've learned how I like to enjoy music, which is at home where I make a slice of time dedicated to it, same way we would watching a movie or whatever. So I don't need the ultra convenience. So I don't need to put up with the annoying Bluetooth arguments between devices. And it's a fun time to play with different music players. Really, the only Bluetooth guys I like dealing with is like the little Theo BTR5, which basically makes your cabled headphones wireless ones and <laughs> these little super nuggets I'm glad it's becoming a genre because there's finally competition I know I need to look at these I'm still looking at them there will be a video but where yeah they turn your cabled headphones into like super nuggets but I'm a freak and sometimes I like going back to my old iPod I upset audio files because I'm never chasing some sort of ultimate sound I chase a vibe and there's some days that smashing an album of mp3s out of an iPod is just really fun and it makes the high-end equipment sound better. The only Bluetooth guys that I'll probably keep around are the AirPod Pros. I mean they're like pocketable earplugs. I like how they sound, they're, they're small, you know, they don't make creaking cracking noises as I walk. But I'm probably just gonna start using cabled IEMs. I'm just sick of batteries and things, sick of it. But to everyone who owns these, they sound awesome. They are super comfortable. They are built extremely tough, except for the little thing that's making the clicking noise. And if you're having no troubles, then I'm envious. Look at the filth. We've had one heck of a time together and I'm done. It's been fun, but I'm done. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching, huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names on here, mate, because one dollar a month, I direct to videos, although I do have garbage time, I just uploaded a Frank video, ooh, she shed her skin, and drum stuff, and I do drum streams on Float Plane, if you want to see me live and yelling at things, but for you one dollar patrons, I'm a car guy, a car bore, as you would say, and um, Here's a Wheels magazine from 1978, and it's a big deal because this was launching the Holden Commodore, the first ever Holden Commodore. I actually had one of these as a kid. <laughs> XD Falcon didn't even look like that. So we're gonna flick through this old car mag because it's <laughs> it's amazing. So thanks so much, mate. I'll see you all next time. Look how peaceful it is. I'm so glad that long idiot isn't here to ruin this. Just makes me so much happier, mate. Just every. Oh, Frank. Oh, can I just get 10 minutes of peace from you, Frank? Hey, it's the after show. Thanks so much for supporting me. Boring! Oh my, puck sales. As a kid, Wheels Magazine was my favorite in the Aussie car magazine. And this is a big deal because, you know, Holden versus Ford, and it was like the Commodore versus the Falcon. Well, 1978, that's the first ever Commodore. I had one of these, like, I had a V8 wagon and a V8 sedan, it was excellent. My, my brother actually had one of these Falcons. They didn't actually look like this, I'll get into that. But yeah, this is before they even launched, it was all just kind of in the air. And when I found this online, I mean, a dollar, shows you how worthless our money is nowadays. Yeah, to actually read the articles, of it before it was even a thing. And also it's just late 70s mankiness, so many cigarette ads. <laughs> Look at that Matra. Man, that thing looks worn out and it's brand new. <laughs> Sexy car. Yeah, but we, they're called Sigmas here. Like that's a Mitsubishi, but it was owned by Chrysler car companies. Oh, look at that lumpy wagon. <laughs> I would love one of that. That's a Honda, yeah? Man, I'd love one of those, those mirrors on the bottom, mate. They just get me. Oh, my pucks up. Schmank. Oh, here we go. I mean, that's what the VB Como looked like. That's exactly what it did. That's not quite what the XD Falcon looked like. What I love about the XD Falcon is it's basically like every child that is asked to just draw a car draws an XD Falcon. It can't be any squarer. <laughs> 
I was a big Holden boy. I'm a Ford guy now because I own some Holdens and realized what throw together GM rubbish they were. Sorry, Holden boys. It's just how it is. And um, I didn't learn for years later that the Commodore was always just a German made mismatch, you know? <laughs> See, look at the Opal badge on it. I never knew that. It was just an Opal. We made the bonnet longer so we can stick a five liter in it, which was a good choice, Aussies. Like, uh, yeah, five liters. And yeah, that is not what the XD ended up looking like. Ugh. And look, a two-door version. We never got a two-door version. We wanted a two-door version. I'm glad we didn't get that steering wheel. Yuck. I love those two-door Volvos. Yeah. Wow, look at that wheel. That is so chunk. Oh no. Subs. I'm getting sad now. Look, there's another company that GM ran into the ground on your boys. <laughs> Drink, car, hi-fi. Oh yeah, mate, that's hi-fi right there. Place nothing but static. Whoa, look at this glory. That was an expensive head unit in the day. <laughs> Bine is another company toying with the ultra luxury car hi-fi. Look at that lumpy looking pulsar. <laughs> oh wait, excuse me. Smoke. Smoke. Love how he's more interested in the SIG than her. Like, come on, mate, get your game straight. <laughs> I want that van. Wow, Armorall's been around for a long time. And wow, that is not a great painting of a, a dirt bike. <laughs> oh, my old Commodore had yellow terror heads. They were awesome. Old 5 liter, 350 horsepower, mate. She went pretty good. Yeah, old Kingswood, mate. Last of the Aussie Holdens. These vans have always looked decrepit. I think they just came out from the factory looking like that. Even back in the 70s. <laughs> my Puxo. Oh, no. My crappy caravan. Oh, no. <laughs> Man, one of them would be fun. <laughs> Just like, that's that's an automobile if I've ever seen one. World's greatest automobiles. Mate, where's Howden? Where's, <laughs> you got Fiat there. Oh yeah, the Nikki runs great by the way. It doesn't. That's the first Toyota sedan? Really? Wow, look at it. I thought it was like Russian. There's a satisfied customer right there. And oh, Kingswood, my dad had one of them. I want one so bad. It's just so rare now. Yeah, Honda Nugget. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Look at all the vinyl. I can just smell it. I mean, we needed the sexy model to sell us a map ply and a dash fan. I mean, you know, no, it all makes sense. I mean, that's, I mean, hot, cold. Whew. Oh, look how there's that graphic equalizer. <laughs> Yeah, there's the Commodore again. Yeah, see, I had a wagon and it was awesome. Got it for free. 4.2 liter V8. Had to start it with a hammer because the starter motor was cack. Motorcycle stunt game. Is that it? Is, is that a game? I mean, I know it was 1978, but wow. That, <laughs> forget the Nintendo Switch. And wow, look, we're at the end. Oh, new car prices. V8 128. Five, six grand! <laughs> Ferrari 308 was 40,000. Here we are, three door Civic, five grand. A Fiat 128 costs more than a Honda! <laughs> I get the Honda! There you go, Kingswood sedan. That's a full size Aussie car, six and a half. So it shows you just how expensive a Ferrari was. Holy heck, Corolla, 4,000. Oh, okay, Rolls Royce, $147,000 in 1978. Oh, and that's nice. The last one is just another, yeah, a Fiat 127. <laughs> the Sports Nugget. And wow, oh, and what a great way to finish. Smoke. Wow, what a time warp. Man, I love old cars, they're so fun. They're just such a time warp. I think the 80s is when like a lot of cars got just completely figured out where like aircon was more likely to find. You could get ABS and airbags in the 80s. Well, thanks, and, and look at the pretty one grip. Look at it. Tiger Electronics. Whoa, look at these winners right here, mate. Just complete engineering prowess. Unbelievable what they managed to get people to spend money on. I never liked these. I never did. It was rough in it. <laughs> and now there's emulators for these. And trying to catch on to any fad, mate, with the mid thousands being all about MP3 players, they heaved out. The Jive Pod. I wonder what they were inspired by with the name, mate. Your music in, your game is on. Challenge a friend. Well, I'd have to make a friend first and hope that they also have a Jive Pod. Turn your music into a game. Yes, this was trying to turn MP3 players into... I don't know how you turn it into a game unless it's Guitar Hero or just that amazing thing called Beat Saber. Now, it says, try me push center and it does this. Oh, oh, all right. <laughs>
it. I think the bats are wearing out because look, includes three ah! included. Thanks, boys, but I think they're feeling a bit sad. Typhoon TM makes a game out of your music. The lights follow the beat. You follow the lights, press the corners and advance your way through three scoring levels. But you've just left out one thing. But why though? Advance my way through three scoring levels, but for what? For what reward, Tiger? Features headphone jack, that is a feature nowadays. Just bring it back. Speaker for your MP3 player. Mate, to me, that's just something for the Diablo to blow up. Three levels of play with scoring. Play with onboard music, ooh. Or connect your personal music player, not included. And of course, it's from 2007. The last days of the MP3 player's reign, right? And then the year that the iPhone came out and ushered in the smartphone era. That's when the worst crap comes out. What's this lion all about? What does he want? It's in that packaging we love. Oh, it's swoopiness makes it harder to open. Oh, gosh, I hate this. Ow! It looks odd. We'll get to it in a bit. What does it come with? Uh, ooh, an, uh, ooh. I see one cable with three ends on it. It's like a mythical beast of Yodi. And, um, okay. It's 99% retail packaging. Don't be a roadmap. Don't be a roadmap. I mean, ooh, it's colorful. It's a, oh, it's the worst kind of roadmap. It's, it's literally a road. <laughs> Look how long it is. Thank you for purchasing this Tripod TM game. Be sure to read and follow these instructions carefully before using the product and keep this manual as a reference. Don't tell me what to do. Note to the consumer, this toy is in try me mode. Yeah, well you try me, mate. Okay. There's the dazzling reset button. This tripod TM unit lets you turn your music into a game. The lights flash in time with the beat and your challenge is to press the correct game button as it lights up. Three levels of difficulty with each level comes more challenging the longer you play. I mean, mentally challenging. It's like, why am I doing this? There is also a non-game light show mode if you simply want to watch the lights flash to the beat of your music. That's actually kind of fun. I'm not going to knock that. Come on, audio files. We all love a good VU meter. All right, so like, we gotta press in time. If it's blue, we got it. If it's red, we missed it. Oh, and, and look, this impossible scenario of number one, having a friend, and number two, them also having a jive pod. Well, better keep this for my own reference. All right, here it is. Beautifully filthy from just sitting out in the open air for weirdos to touch it. Weirdos being me. It's got this turned, oh, oh okay. I like that now. Not that it does anything. Let's do the dad bit. Better be a really funny brand of bats. I mean, credit to these batteries for still kind of working all this time. Come on. <laughs> okay, green cells. It's got nothing against the puck cell. It doesn't tout its greenness. It just wears it. Although the new puck cells don't have the... Gotta lock them down so the kids don't eat them. They are tasty looking, I will say. All right, I'm gonna put it back into the try me mode. Activate. Dazzle me. I'll put it in try me though. Oh! Oh, that's a filthy beat. Yeah, filth! Whoa, I didn't do anything! I think the best way to test this idiot is to use the inbuilt music, because I'm guessing it's actually going to be properly timed up with... Gosh, I can't even imagine what kind of gameplay I'm in for. <laughs> let's set it on one. Alright, let's, let's do it. I'm doing it! Oh, that sucks. Oh, look, look, I just get the point if I just... Okay, okay, shh, shh, be quiet. Okay, um, my ultimate problem with it out the box is that there's not a lot of punishment for being very, very out of time. There's a Nintendo DS game called Rhythm Heaven. I, I've 100% completed that game. It is so good the way it works. It is ruthless in how accurate you need to be. And that's the rewarding challenge is actually getting a point because you did it perfect. This, you can press it super early, super late. I was trying to tap in time and a few of them just landed on nothing. Oh no guys, are you telling me this is just a piece of junk made to sell quickly during a fad? Before we explode it, we gotta we gotta have a game of Scarlet Fire. You gonna? Oh, there it is. Damn it! Ah! 
<laughs> I'm, I'm tapping in the beat. Makes sense. Yeah. The music has stopped, by the way, but it's still. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. Thanks, mate. Um. Yeah. Most of the beats landed in time with the music. At some were eighth notes, where you got quarter notes on the beat, and then you got eighth notes in between. But some of these were like 30 second notes, like dig it, <laughs> Well, um, I think it's time to play Scarlet Fire again, but um, I think it needed more volume. <laughs> like the world was coming to an end. <laughs> she held out pretty good, mate. But there is one more way I can think of playing along to this guy. Oh man, that game got out of hand. Look, there's eggs, sausages, and my pork cell. God, even the duck got out of hand. Um, hey, I gotta say <laughs> that I was gritting it as hard as I could, and dang it, it, it just kept going, didn't it? <laughs> and that was a max volume out of Diablo as well. But that said, this really was a terrible, disappointing product that <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's as shallow as a puddle in terms of gameplay and rewarding experience. It's, yeah, it's very ta- I was gaining points there with the one grit. I even got a little applause there at the end. Need to rescue the boys though. Whoa! Go on, get out. Your job's done. Good on you. Although, what secrets lie within? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh gosh, there's screws everywhere. Talk about over-engineered for what kind of experience this thing heaves out. <laughs> yeah, some LEDs and something to send audio around. Ugh. Oh, 2007, and I've still got so many more things to show you from this era. <laughs> well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching, mate. Huge thanks to our patrons, especially these stinky names right here, because one dollar a month, I do it to videos. I, I do have garbage time, which I swear I'm making videos for. <laughs> I stream drums on float plane where I yell at people and play weird symbols. But for one dollar, mate, it's been a little bit. We're gonna sit and talk with Franklin. I think we can finally corner her this time and really press those hard to answer questions. Questions, like what's Frank's favorite smell and favorite brand of microwavable sausage rolls? I'll see you all next time. Shh. We're spying on Frank. I'm not gonna lie. <gasps> We've been spotted. Oh no, I was just going to. Oh no, 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 no. Oh no, 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 oh no, we're in big trouble. We're in big trouble. We're in big trouble. We're in big trouble, guys. Hey, it's the after show. Thanks so much for supporting me. I really appreciate this. Frank says nothing. Nothing at all. But it's been a little bit since we last checked in on Frank. And so let's have a see what, what you're doing, Frank. What are you up to? Here we go. Is she aware? Frank is still unaware. But you activate the noodle with a simple touch. Three, two, one. Noodle touching. Nothing. No, nothing at all, Frank. Look, the Frank hasn't begun yet. Not until we see a tongue flick has the Frank session begun. Oh, yeah, it's begun. <laughs> Frank's finally turned on. It's just how <laughs> just chilled out she is. I love how scared everyone is of Frank. I've had a lot of tradies in at this place, and none of them will get even close to her. So scary. Frank, my long dog. You like this, though, don't you, Frank? You like this, though. I do have a question, though, Frank, and it's a personal one. What's, what's your favorite color, Frank? What's your favorite smell? 
Come on, Frank, you've been dogging these questions for too long. Frank, what's your favorite brand of microwavable sausage rolls? It's a really simple one, Frank. No, I've told you to speak English. We don't understand that. Frank really likes this. <laughs> Fingernail right along the back. She's like, mmm, yes. No, she's not trying to get away. She's just rolling about. Except, except for when Frank, Frank, why do you wait until I say something like that before, and then you do exactly what I, oh, you made me a liar all over Frank. It's okay, we can head her off. Come on, Frank, you can't escape. I know where you live. It's in this box. You can't just hide in the shadows from these questions, Frank. The people need to know what's your favorite brand of microwavable sausage rolls. Frank's giving us the sassy look. She's like, no, uh these are personal questions. I ain't answering none of them. I want to speak to my lawyer first. My name's Frank. I make bad smells. Come on, Frank. I'm your friend. It's about time you paid rent around here. No, Frank. Don't escape my love. Come on, Frank. You're nasty and rude. Oh, and there you go, people who follow my drum streams. Uh, there's Frank Camera 1, F Frank Camera 2, Frank Camera 3, and a stinky house camera four. Frank loves pushing this one over. Cause you suck. Frank, you're heading home now, aren't you? You're heading home now, aren't you? Why do you pause like this? You're gonna run away from your pepperazzi questions. There's no door that side, Frank. You've lived here this whole time and you, you, come on, there's never been a door that side. That's it, Frank. Straight, straight up. <laughs> straight, straight up, Frank. Frank? Frank, it's, it's up here. Frank, you only go into this place like 30 times a day. <laughs> Just get in there, you wench. You big fatty useless. <laughs> oh, yeah, thanks for ruining it. See you, Frank. Oh, don't stop there. Gosh, it just keeps going, huh? I wonder why the poos are so big. There's just so much Frank. There's just so much Frank. Frank. That's it, Frank. <laughs> Look, that's it. Oh, wow, you wench. <laughs> you bluffed me there. Look at her, look at her just hiding in the shadows. I, yeah, Frank, we can still see you. Don't act surprised. <gasps> Frank's coming out for a fight. What do you want a bit, eh? No, she's just being nice. I walked away for a bit and now she's just licking the wood. Just, oh no, now we're just looking at the wood. Yeah, Frank, we, we saw all of that. We we saw all of that weirdness, Frank. And you betcha I'm putting it on the internet. Yeah, there's not, nah, 
No negotiation, Frank. We, we all caught that weirdness, eh? This isn't a vintage Walkman. <laughs> so a lot of folks would call one of these an MP3 player, which doesn't really give them a lot of respect. Yes, I know I've called it one in the video title, stop yelling. I mean, you could use these for MP3s, but it would be kind of like buying a purebred champion racehorse to help fertilize the garden with. You know, a million dollar poo machine. The proper name for these dedicated music players is a DAP. Digital audio player. Forget one headphone jack, mate. This nugget's got three of them. And like the guy we're looking at today is easily the most extreme dap made to date. And full transparency, yes, Fio has sent me this thing, but I, I tell you, I tried to buy it first. I, I said, hey, can I pre-order it, please? And then Fio just sent it. They're just gonna send it. But it's serious time. None of you are ready for the chunk you're about to witness. Because this isn't a big chungus. You're about to witness the biggest chungus. This is the Fio M15. I mean, check out the scratches on the back. I've been using this heaps. And this has been my dedicated music player of choice. And chunk wise, this is chonk. Like, people would complain about this being in their pocket. It's kind of like a hip flask. I mean, compare it to the dingus. Oh, Bobby, that'd be a chunky nugget. Oh, 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 my. <laughs> you ready for the money shot? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, let's get. <laughs> right, I know what you're thinking, but why though? <laughs> so, audio equipment is a lot like gaming and graphics cards. Digital content is just ones and zeros. Movies, music, games, whatever, you need to turn that raw signal into the content you want. So, like in consoles and PCs, that's a GPU, a graphics processing unit. It's just an extra processor commanded to do a specific task. It's still just smashing out ones and zeros, mate. It's why people have found ways to use them for crypto mining. Please bring graphics card prices down, though. And in gaming land, you can have desktop grade GPUs that can run hot and have big power supplies and fans that call them and then the mobile versions of like gaming laptops with heat and power in mind. The M15 here really is like the equivalent of a stout gaming laptop but instead of a GPU it has a DAC, a digital to analog converter. It's an extra processor dedicated to turning those ones and zeros into an analog signal which is, I'm being serious, I mean this, it's something you can send down a coat hanger wire. I, I mean it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so archaic, but it's great. And then it's combined with an amplifier to send the extra power for those big chunky headphones on your greasy face. So if the M15 is like a laptop grade RTX 3060, well then like the 17 is a full fat desktop 3090. And even if you don't understand gaming, right, this has, and I mean it, desktop grade internals in it. This humongous chassis is to help cool it. Because as far as I can research, this is the most powerful DAP made to date. It has a 9200 milliamp hour battery, and you betcha she gets warm. But the feature that for me is the biggest selling point, I mean, along with the humongous power, which we'll get to, but it's why I had to have this, and, and please don't get emotional every everyone. It has four headphone jacks. <laughs> four! Every single one. It's got the standard outputs of big and small and it's got both balanced outputs. And you know, because it's got all the Bluetooth junk in it as well, I mean, you can literally pair any pair of headphones to it. Bluetooth, vintage, more, it doesn't matter. And then the port situation continues. Two USB-Cs. One so you can charge it and one so you can plug in like external hard drives and stuff. Micro SD in. All my flax are loaded onto a little card stuffed in there. So it looks expensive. And yes, it is. This is 1800 US Freedom Eagles. That's a lot of stinking money. But you know, it does exist in a world where you can easily pay $3,000 for a dab. <laughs> So why is this a big deal? Well, a lot of us are excited for this thing because there are some headphones that are for desktop setups only. Powered by amps plugged into the wall where they can have unlimited power. For instance, my Bad Dynamic T1s, the first audiophile headphones I ever bought brand new. And boy, do they like a big amp to drive them. I mean, just to show how stinky the T1s are, you know, there are other factors like sensitivity, but you know, generally, the more ohms they are, the harder they are to drive. Classic Dirty Buds, mate, they're about 40 ohms. Some K612, Mate, they're 120 ohms. Like, you want to be using an amp at this stage. The Herjo 600s, these are 300 ohm. These are desktop headphones. The T1s, 600. 
hundred ohms. They are hard work to drive. So I got so excited for these because if I wanted to use those big stinky headphones, usually I'd just sit at my workstation with its Apollo twin or run massive Grado extension cables in my lounge room from my Cambridge amp. That's really annoying, but not anymore. I've longed to just lay on the couch, lay in bed, lay on the floor and drive big stinking headphones. So the max volume on this guy is 120. With the HD 600, desktop grade headphones, I'm happy with the volume sitting at 60. The T1s, only 70. This thing is incredibly comfortable just pounding out volume. I've got some high-end headphones that are only 32 ohms, you know, like the, the Meze Elites and whatnot. And comparing this versus this, using the same headphones, like honestly, even using Spotify, this guy just sounds Bigger. It like, just feels like a bigger room. The lows are lower, there's more air in the sound, but then how fast the headphones are responding to the music. Like it's mental how responsive headphones really are when you got some guy really taking control. Noah's time traveler. Man, the arpeggiated synths in the verse. It is so stinky. Through the HD 600s, through this thing, I had my mouth agape at how fast and crisp it was all combining with the vocals coming through crystal clear right through the middle. It was amazing. But with high-end audio, the higher you go, the fussier it gets. I, I never knew how bad it could be until I got some high-end equipment. Our electricity is weird, and if you have signal cables and power cables even near each other, it can create humming and buzzing. So it's not just the big stinking battery that that makes this guy so chunk, everything is completely isolated. All of these different boards, because you have insane power right next to outputs, and it's what you gotta do to get silence. Like for instance, people notice plugging say KZs or like high sensitivity IEMs into old iPods, you can often hear a little hum or a hiss at higher volumes, and that's high sensitivity headphones for you. Hearing all those little tiny flaws. I don't know, I kind of find it charming, it reminds me of cassettes. This guy, you can turn it all the way up to max, and it's silence. The how powerful this thing is, that is amazing. And you know, it does look amazing. Like this prismy glass effect. Yes, those are RGB. <laughs> it's a total take. And it's got a million and one features in it, right? It's compatible with heaps of audio standards and bit rates. But honestly, I've been waiting for this lad for one reason. I adore vintage headphones. Oh, so like earlier, mate, we're talking about headphones that are hard to drive, eh? That's cute. Oh, the T1s, ah, 600 ohm. Ooh. We always say it's not always about the ohms. Let's meet the exception. If you can see through your eyes as they weep tears, the AKG K340s. These are 400 ohm, but the K340s care not for your ohms. Right, these are top of the line AKGs from 1978, and they've actually got two speakers in each ear cup, a dynamic driver for the low end bass, and electrostatics for the top end bits. And back in the day, these were furiously expensive. Crazy coily cable with the big dingus idiot end. So the M17 goes up to 120, and the T1 sit at 70 when I'm listening to it. Well, these nuggets need 110. I, I could max this out with these on and I would be fine. Oh, but look at this switch. Bat and DC? Wait, wait a minute, that does charging. But there's an extra power port. It even comes with its own power brick. Because, yeah, this thing charges over USB-C. You don't need this to use it. But if you plug this in, flicker onto DC, smack that in, Whoa, you've just unlocked a hidden gain mode. Enhanced over ear headphone mode. Yeah, never mind you got low, medium, high gain, and then over ear headphone mode. Mate, this one goes again. You know, Theo include a cooling stand for you to sit this thing on, cause it does get really stinking warm. Although admittedly, I never use this. <laughs> I wanna feel the burn. In this special DC mode, man, those AKG K340s just wake up. It's the best I've ever heard them. And instead of 110 volume, it now sits at 90. <laughs> it's still so stinky. But hey, why not? Let's have a quick listen against the HD 600s. <laughs>
It's got the extra top end, that is just classic AKG. Um, and the bass isn't as prominent. But remembering that the HD 600s aren't bassy headphones. Like bass heads say, they're not bassy enough but they sound bassy compared to these. But after trying so many pairs of headphones over these last few years, I found that I really enjoy chasing an experience. And it's due to studying and working as a musician for like my entire life, and that like there are albums from every decade that are historical. You know, for instance, these are from 78 to 82. MJ's Thriller came out in 82. And you know, if you had these headphones back then, you were a baller. And you know, I get to experience that album the way they did back then. And like, I've owned these for well over a year, but they're just so fussy to use. I mean, I've been using this for about a month and a bit, and all I do is just grab it, hop in a chair, plug in and go. I love this thing. It runs Android 10, it's got an octa-core Snapdragon in it, and honestly, it runs amazing. You know, I've used this to Google stuff, I've used YouTube on it. Like, the screen is great. I mean, it's, it's not like the, the top-end flagships, but it's still excellent, and it's a big screen. It's also got a pure music mode, where this is Fio's very own, like, software, where now it's like an iPod. You're away from the internet, you're away from distractions. But that's not the best bit. <laughs> USB DAC mode. You USB plug this into a computer and boom, this is now your sound card. Now you can use 1978 K340s for gaming or use high-end editing headphones with a MacBook Air. But the best one yet, the Bluetooth receiving mode. I've paired this thing with my Apple TV and then I went all the way and watched A Bug's Life through a pair of Jekyll floats. It sounds floaty. So you can't use all of these at once, it's one or the other, but it's so powerful, you could run a splitter out of this and have two people listening through it. Then it's got the coax out and the USB in for like hard drives and things. This could be a centerpiece for like a small speaker system. Like it's ridiculously chunk, but it's so versatile. If we're talking of big stinky power, mate, we got to have a Dirty Buds blow off with the Diablo. We got some cash. These phones. All right, the Diablo goes first, mate. <laughs> Amazing work, Diablo. Well, here we go. Oh, you don't need an adapter, mate. You just whack them straight in. Well, interesting. Well, I mean, that's the thing. I honestly got the ISD Diablo because they reached out to me to say that this is the most powerful portable amplifier they've made. I mean, like, you know, you get a vibe on the chunk and the size. You see how big this guy is and it has like no screen. It has no means of playing music on its own. This is just an amp and nothing more. I mean, the fact that this got the headphones the rattle. Like, that, that would be unbelievably uncomfortable. I do like the Diablo, it's why it's been hanging around for so long. So, you don't need a device like this. You know, you don't need that cool USB DAC, Bluetooth receiving stuff. That is not unique to high-end apps like this. In fact, I'm going to hijack the M17's moment of glory and use it as an example of how amazing all modern music players are now. Look at some mid-range apps, Bluetooth receiving and USB DAC capabilities. That said, not all of them can do this. I mean, this guy does not work as a USB DAC and it's only got one headphone jack, Sony. But tiny guys like the BTR5, this guy works as a receiver and a USB DAC. It's got balance output as well. This thing is everything I could want in a portable media player. I don't even care about the stonky chunkness. I like to take 45 minutes out of my day and sit and listen to music. This sitting on the couch doesn't bother me at all. And I, I have very spontaneous moments when I want to listen to music. It's from working as a musician, right? My life was music, so I don't tend to listen very casually. And when I'm inspired to listen, I just want to grab headphones, sit and go. And the fact that I can grab the craziest vintage headphones and just get straight into it, this is amazing. No more turning on workstations or turning on the TV and running extension cables, mate. This is such a specific device, I almost feel like it's made just for me. And I hope by showing you how hardcore adapt can be, that you'll find that an entry model one does everything that you want it to and you can rejoin the winning team of folks with functioning headphone jacks. Bring back the headphone jack, come on! Every phone's looked the same for four years now. You're running out of features, guys. Here's a feature we'd all love, a headphone jack. Well, that's it. 
thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here, because my $1 a month, I do it to videos, although there is garbage time as well. Gosh, I hope to get a video done this week. <laughs> the Nikki is running, spoilers. And I do my drum stream on Float Plane, where I just yell and play hilarious symbols that I find online. But for my precious $1 patrons, now that I've just got the perfect guy for running crazy old manky headphones through, mate, we're gonna have a look at the deluxe headphone, just one. You can barely read that, it says, for private listening pleasure, we're, we're gonna have a smell of these. So thanks so much, mate. I'll see you all next time. Frank's doing a stunning job of being hidden. We can't see her at all. And you know, it actually gets better. I mean, like, you know, Frank, none of us can see you. You're invisible. Hey, it's the after show. Thanks so much for supporting me. I really appreciate you. Yeah, this channel is so much fun to make. I love every week. And, you know, you guys make it possible. So this week's video was looking at the epic M17 4 headphone jack Big Dingus Express. Because I love vintage headphones. They're so much fun to play with. Um, let me show you what most vintage headphones are really like. You know, the K340s are top of the line big business. <laughs> yeah. Very, very serious set of headphones. Most people weren't buying stuff like that. You want to talk about the more affordable stuff from back in the day? What well, they look like this. Archer Deluxe Headphone. Just one, like, you buy one, get one free, obviously. Right there it says, for private listening pleasure. Boy, she been around the block. I mean, I, I'm guessing 70s? Late 70s, maybe? Full range frequency response. Softly padded ear. Cushions. Nice formatting, guys. Adjustable earpieces? What? That's amazing. Eight ohms. <laughs> yeah, so many vintage headphones are just eight ohms. Like, it's just what they are. And that is very depressing, actually, I've only just noticed. Mono? Re Wait, deluxe headphone, and it's only mono. Okay. <laughs> well, it's Radio Shack, a division of Tandy. Big business as big business does. Is there anything else? That's, that's the same thing. And uh, that's the same thing. And um, alrighty, that's the same thing. Oh, there's no manual or anything. There, oh, there is dirt though. I'm really getting that late 70s, early 80s vibe. Look, it's got that faux leather look and it's hard, hard plastic. It's like the dashboard of an old Datsun and I, I really stand by that. Ugh, man, these things are gross. <laughs> ew, ew, actually no. Oh dear. Oh, did I do? Did I just break them before I've tried them? Oh no, my deluxe head behonies. Well, deluxe, ew, it's got a spring in it, why? I I'm just gonna put this back on and pretend I never looked in there. Oh no, I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> I've made a huge mistake. Oh no. So yes, they are eight ohms and very, very sensitive. So that'll be fun. Okay, that's completely broken and does, mm. That, ew. Oh man, oh! Oh, on the mono cable, you can tell it's mono because look, it's only got one contact point. You can see with the AKGs, she's got two. That's the stereo. Well, we got the M17 here, also known as Absolute Overkill, but look! No dongle! Smash him straight in and turn the volume all the way down, my golly gosh. Oh my pixel. In typical vintage headphone fashion, they're an elevator simulator. That's what that is like. Would you like to have the audio quality of standing in a box with strangers as you go up and down? Well, here you go. And these have been touted as deluxe headphones. I know you guys want me to blow them up, but part of me doesn't want to do it. And also because I got to go home and make those recordings that you've just heard. It's, it's how editing works. It's like a weird time warp, mate. At least they weren't uncomfortable. I mean, you know, they don't adjust properly anymore. I'm, I'm sure it was better than the TV speaker back then. Oh, Archer, why did you lie to us? <laughs> These are deluxe headphones, well then Frank makes deluxe perfume smells. 
known as Poo. Well, hope you can see why I really love vintage headphones. They're just funny. It is actually really fun to listen to an album with stuff like this because for a lot of people, this is how their music sounded. You know, good or bad. That is just how it was. And like, you know, audio had a real big glow up period in the late 70s, early 80s. And I'd like to say another glow up period right now. Like right now is the best time for audio. You know, today's equivalent of these are like Samson SR8 fitties. They're not expensive. I mean, God, let's have a listen to these. <laughs> Look how far we've come for budget headphones. I know the hardcore whinge about these and say, so, oh, you only like them because you haven't heard better. Baby, we've come a long way in consumer goods. Well, thanks, and Frank smells. Oh, look at this. It's a vinyl. So, I'm a digital kid and honestly, I've basically no experience with vinyl. <laughs> like, my parents had some discs and a turntable, but as a kid, we weren't allowed to touch it. And now having tried vinyl, I can totally see why. It's really fragile stuff. Like, once you scratch it, that's it. It's scratched. But, like, it was really exciting to be a full-grown man and get to experience it properly for the first time and, like, really appreciate it. And I'd been building up to this for a while. I mean, it took me two years to piece together my speaker rig and a nice turntable would really complement it. Please try to ignore the Apple II. So, in just excited anticipation, like, before I even had the turntable, I popped down to my JBs to grab some of my favourite albums. Oh, gosh, those big, beautiful album covers. They, they really get me. But now I needed a player. So, I wanted to get something pretty nice something that i thought that i could keep forever you know i wouldn't think i'd need to change it at any point the only issue is i had no idea what i was doing so i popped down to addicted to audio here in adelaide and they gave me the tour and it's moments like this where actually going to the store is just the best because i could ask questions right there and get answers right there but honestly google searches are worse than ever and buying online sucks now anyways like you know couriers just stop it but i settled on an avid ingenium not cheap, and hilariously described as an entry model unit. Shows you how far those avids can go. So there's so many different turntables you can get. You can have fully automatic ones where it's almost like a CD. Like you could actually select tracks. Yeah, just next song please. But the avid is as manual as it gets. I wanted the raw experience. This guy's so raw, like the motor and the chassis are not connected, it's just the belt that links them. It's to keep all vibrations away from the disc because like, if you have like a normal closed lid one and you just put the album cover on top, that can cause it to skip. It is that sensitive. Sorry for how dark and gloomy it is in my cabin here, but you know, there's no on and off button. It's literally a switch just to turn the electric motor on or not. I actually love how simple it is. But if you tried to just plug it into your speaker rig, it would have no volume at all. You need a phono preamp, yep. We ain't done spending money yet. It's because vinyl is mixed in a really specific way in order to make it work, so you need those specific amps to boost the signal. But I got it all plumbed in, nice and tucked away. I got my discs of good noises, and now it all boils down to this question. The question you've been yelling at the screen this whole time, completely disregarding all the information I've thus given. Does it sound better than digital? No. No, it doesn't. But it's not that simple. A lot of stigma against digital music goes back to its earliest days. Remember, MP3 players were invented in like 1997, which wasn't that long ago, really. And at the time, digital music was an enigma, like whole books just explaining MP3s. And back then, yeah, MP3 sounded like garb. So heavily compressed, with out of date ways of doing it. I have whole piles of vintage MP3 players with the original music still on them, and they sound pretty crap. But nowadays, with just how insane microprocessors are, like smartphones are more powerful than laptops were five years ago. We have supercomputers in our pocket, and that like unpacking huge, stinky, lossless digital files is a piece of cake now. These tiny nuggets can pull it off now. And with over 20 years practice compressing music, we've gotten really good at it. I feel we really do take for granted just how good digital music actually sounds. Oh, then vinyl sounds like crap then, huh? I knew it. Next person that tells me vinyl sounds great, oh, I'm gonna tell them they've been smoking too much cabbage, mate. Well, that's not true either, because vinyl sounds bloody excellent. <laughs> it, it really does, honestly. 
Oh my puck cell! In order for me to notice, right, I had the digital version and the vinyl version matched to the second, A being on my amplifier going like, vinyl, digital, vinyl, digital, and it was paired at the exact same point, right? Honestly, it's the very top and the very bottom end that's missing. And like, by the way, switching backwards and forwards like that, and you know, I have to do it with headphones when reviewing them too. It's the worst way to listen to music. And it's why reviews can actually be a bit of a drag to make. Like switching back and forth between equipment like that can make you hate thousand dollar headphones because of a subtle difference you'd never notice even if you waited just half an hour before switching. That's why I do have some headphones I haven't done videos on. I don't want to ruin them. <laughs> but the first time that I put one of these vinyl records on, I sat back on the couch and I couldn't believe that a needle was scratching it out for me. It feels like magic, yet it's one of the oldest ways we've listened back to pre-recorded anything. And it sounds stinking great, it really does. And a lot of the quality sound you're gonna get, I mean just like digital, it's the quality of the recording that is the biggest bit. I have some old Top of the Pops albums here from way back and they sound terrible, like worse than old MP3s, but then like proper releases are pretty amazing. But now I'm sure a lot of you folks are muttering, but I've switched between digital and vinyl, and I prefer vinyl, and like, why then? Well, music is mixed differently for vinyl because, yeah, it's a needle that has to vibrate within grooves to make it work. So the bass is centered, i.e. it's not going from left and right, it stays in the middle. You can make it jump left and right, but it's way harder for the needle it has to make bigger sweeps, which can cause skipping, and apparently it's harder to make the, the discs themselves. So you really might just enjoy the specific mix vinyl releases get, and that's cool. But I've been using the, the Avid for like three months now. I mean, it's why reviews take so long. I really do like the soak in the experience. And what I've realized is it's not about sound quality. It's about vibe quality. Because we're in an age where everything is just instantly accessible now. Like shows, movies, music, mate, food. You can just have it immediately now. You can be having a poo while watching The Incredibles and ordering dinner to be delivered. What an age we live in. But it also means that we can just be burdened by choice. Alright, as soon as something stops being interesting, it's so tempting just to skip over a bit, put something else on. But anytime I put a record on, I find myself listening to the whole album front to back. Well, I've gone through all the trouble of getting a setup, you know, and then to set the arm down so it doesn't skip off the edge and make that horrible noise. And so once it's going, I don't even want to touch it. So it's fussiness to me is a huge benefit. I don't take time off very well. I always think that I need to be doing something. But when a disc is playing, I would happily sit and just enjoy all of it. When using digital, it's just so easy to press pause and get back to work, eh? No wonder why it's making a comeback, you know, because humans are weird and we're just animals after all. I mean, look at fidget cubes. They do nothing. Yet we just love how they feel. It's fun to fidget with something. And then here comes vinyl, which lets you hold your music. So this isn't the only turntable I got. I know most people People aren't going to be grabbing something like the Avid, which really is for enthusiasts. It's expensive, very fragile, like you have to put it back into its box to move it anywhere, and it's completely manual. While I was in JB's, I made sure to grab the classic staple, an Auto Technica. Even at this price, it has a built-in preamp. You can just plug this straight into some little speakers. It's even automatic. Watch it. Place a disc, press play, off you go. <laughs> and it's nuts how great this cheap guy sounds. I can see for most people this would be perfect. All the fun of vinyl, but with none of the huge costs. And a lot of the scary taken out. Place a disc, press play. But I mean, don't get me wrong, the Avid with the Moon preamp definitely has the edge in sound. You know, you'd expect that. And if you've been thinking about getting into vinyl, mate, it's the best time to get into it. Cause I'm telling you, modern discs are so much better than the old ones. I've inherited my folks' old vinyl stash. And you know, back then it was a mainstream thing, meaning they'll try to make as much money as they could by making them as cheap as possible, and they are crazy thin. Like vinyl nowadays is for enthusiasts, so the discs are way thicker. Like it's good. And yes, vinyl is expensive, but like I don't use it to discover music. All the discs I have are my all-time favorite albums. Ones I'll happily listen to on repeat. Ones that I'd love to experience differently. I don't need to have all my music in vinyl, but there's something special about being able to hold my favorite album. So while it technically doesn't beat digital, it certainly delivers an experience that digital just simply can't touch. It's fiddly, it's fussy, it's expensive. You can ruin a disc with no effort at all. But then it comes with these beautiful, 
fold out. <laughs> like, you know, it's it's beautiful. This really is for enthusiasts. And then watching that disc go round is mesmerizing. It's almost like a campfire. You just want to sit and be around it. Even with my crazy flat players and modern headphones, I, I'm adoring vinyl. It's absolutely part of my routine now. And you know, what? I hope a whole bunch of you get into it too. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here, because my $1 a month, I do it to videos. It's the least I can do. I keep saying it. You guys make this channel work. I'm currently being bombarded with advertisers, like saying, please put sponsor spots in your ads, and it's fun telling them no. So thank you for giving me that superpower. But for you $1 patrons, mate, I'm sure you just couldn't stop looking at that Apple II. Well, I'm gonna flick it on to see what it does. So thanks so much, and mate. I'll see you all next time. Frank, Frank, come over here. C come on, we can't do the thing we've rehearsed until you're looking at me. Frank, the camera's over here. Frank? Oi. Oi, Frank, oi. Frank. God, every time. Hey, it's the after show. Thank you so much for supporting me. You make this whole thing work. You, you free me from advertisers, get rid of stupid mid-roll ads and all that. Corporate busy junk. And we can get down to the real business, which is smelling this late 70s, early 80s beast. It's a total nugget. It's great because you literally can just plug in an aux into it and literally download like programs for it over the internet directly via your phone and a dongle. So I've downloaded some stuff ahead of time and we're just just gonna see what happens. All right, this is how you use it. So, control reset, it bonk, load, then you press return, and then you press play. Over to you, mate. Yeah, that's, the, that's the bonk to say that I'm listening. Yeah, asteroids. Oh, inflating, just like a balloon. And here, <laughs> here we go. I have this slamming joystick here, because it's just, I can't fathom this keyboard. <laughs> Look at these arrow keys. No thank you. But I have to use a keyboard for this one and I can't fathom it. Asteroids, what do you want? I don't know how to steer. Oh, can you hear the frantic business going on? Like, okay, oh no, 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 no. How do I steer it? I don't know how to steer. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm pressing everything, man. Steer, you big dingus. I know the keyboard works. No, you, cosmic juggler. Only 85 seconds away. Ooh, ooh, can you hear that noise? Ooh, it's like a big bug walking over posters. It's like a fever dream. Oh, I, I, I'm a bug. I thought I'd be the juggler, not the bug. Oh, <laughs> this joystick is le junk. You ready? I, man, this bug handles worse than my old Ford Fiesta. Oh, I can get up there. Oh, I'm coming for you, you galactic juggler. What? Fender Bender. Wait, is it California or Tokyo? W what is it? Yes. Oh, we want full sound effects. Oh no, I can't. <laughs> Flight simulator. And I bet you it's gonna be absolutely accurate. Oh wow, it's like I'm in a real plane. Slash fever dream. Oh no. Whoa, what happened? Wait, are we, um, come on, we go. <laughs> why is this so unresponsive? Why, why is nothing doing anything? <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, I remember using like a computer like this as a kid, like when I was like four or five, and this was my experience. Whoa. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> we're, we're moving apparently. I'm guessing this is existence here. We're, we're moving across existence, okay? I've been moving for some time. Other instructions, anything. It's just dumped me straight in. I mean, this was back in the days where having like text instructions would take up too much resources <laughs> and take away from the game. Well, I had fun soaring as an eagle. Let's just... <laughs> It's like kid pics, it just nukes the whole screen. Lemmings. It better have music. Oh, I beg you for joystick. Why, why are the options flashing like that? Just, okay, so I want one. Yeah. What, straight in? It was. It 
Ooh. 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 What? Is this lemmings? If it didn't say it at the top, I wouldn't believe it. Um. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What the heck? I think I'm the dot, but I have no control. Look, like, okay, like, up, up, no, don't fight me. This is, this is the worst lemmings I've, why did it go to the- That noise isn't annoying at all. I, I don't mind it. It's like a digital ocean. I'm just gonna say it. This game stinks. Tom Bomb'em. Is that a logo? This big slab of nothing. Yeah, Tom Bummum. There's Tom Ship. Merciless marauding malicious marketers. Oh, gimme, give gimme give the, the story. It is the year 2025. Oh no, that's not far away. <laughs> All telemarketers and unsolicited bulk emails have been exiled to Phobos. I'm actually all for that. Right before being trapped forever, they managed to launch one last marketing droid. You are Tom Bummum. You drew the short straw. It is up to you to destroy the evil and restore peace to the soul system. I'm all for this actually. Yeah, less annoying marketing. <laughs> that's me. Oh no, that's Vince. That's the guy who made this. Oh man, all right, this is my favorite actual. <laughs> Let's get straight in. Whoa, it's chunky. <gasps> the thing works. No, it doesn't. Oh, I can shoot, but I can't. Okay, we've got the two-handed biz going here. Man, it's very low resolution game. Like, it's it's actually less than a Game Boy, I swear. But look, I'm moving, I'm shooting, I have like cromulent control. No real desire to keep playing. I found this would be the safest strategy to stand still and shoot. This is what I'm doing. I'm Tom Bomber. I didn't know it was this easy to take over marketing. <laughs> Bonus points, none. What, was this not enough for you, Tom? Whoa, it's the big guy. Oh no, actual. I, oh, ding it. Well, it was my favorite, but like, I never want to play it again. Oh my pucks up. Oh yes. So we're going back to our roots today, an iPod video. I know a lot of people ask about iPod mods, but like, guys, I had an iPod running a PC SSD with Windows installed on it through the 30 pin connector, which I then ran Doom Eternal through. I mean, it's a bit hard to top that, right? But this guy right here, I've been holding on to this for well over two years. I finally want to open it. <laughs> Brand new! I mean, she she took a knock there, but you know, you know how it is. I think this is the greatest iPod ever made. Good old 2005 iPod video. I mean, we were begging for portable video back then. There were devices that did it, absolutely, but this is the one that got the juggle just right, where it wasn't insanely massive. So many of those first portable video players were just stinking hilarious, whereas this lad could slip straight into your pocket. Ooh, it's dusty. When I first started this channel, I picked this up when I noticed that I was cacking the price of iPods pretty bad. Look, there it is. Apple 30 gig one, yep, which was the small one. And um, I think this was a domestic Chinese one, which might explain why it's still still. I mean, that's, it's actually pretty amazing that this has never been opened because the thing about Apple devices, love or hate them, they're a really enjoyable unboxing experience. So I'm actually blown away that no one was tempted, I mean, especially with this here, no one was tempted just to, to finish the job. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Ooh, she'll never be new again. My brand new nug. I don't know how to open this. What is, what, hang on. Okay, this is a domestic Chinese one. <laughs> yeah, oh, I don't read any of that. I mean, they are made in China after all. D does it slide? Does it, does it anything? Does it anything? Okay, there might not be any English in here. We'll get to oh, we'll get to the nugget in a bit. Ew, it's dirty already. Why? All right, well we gotta we gotta read the card first, like all good gifts. Look at this, it's like medical equipment. Oh, it comes with a pouch. I got the gloves on because I would like to put this all back into its box and not get it covered in fingerprints. If you're curious. 
Okay, well, oh, it's a bit of English. Okay, all right, there's not a lot, there's not a lot of English. Why are some bits in English and then some bits are in Chinese? Like dock, menu, hold, and then nothing else. Apple stickers, they've been doing that for yonks. And then this one's entirely English. Like, oh, oh there it is. The Chinese ones get a, get a letter. <laughs> wow, that's weird. This is stuff I'm interested in. Oh. It smells like acetone. <laughs> it stinks. Wow, look how white they're meant to be. Look how <laughs> I've only ever seen filthy ones of these. That's awesome. Yeah, we absolutely have to use this. And the stink buds. <laughs> these are not good. It's buds like these that make people hate like the current iteration of Apple Dirty Buds, which I think are actually quite decent. These are not decent. <laughs> People hated these and for good reason. They smell like acetone. All right, get keen. It's the guy. Oh, I forgot how beautifully heavy these are because of the hard drives in them. My brand new nug. Yeah, no residue. Show me that new nugget. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh man, these things are pretty. And look, the Chinese ones got all this extra gobbledygooks at the bottom. Reproduction fronts for iPods are found to be really, really cheap and nasty and scratch easily. So the C and OG one is pretty nuts. Will it turn on? <laughs> Come on, 15 year old battery. Okay, gotta put it in its egg sleeve real quick, just to prove that, that it actually fits. Oh, get in there. Um. Okay, and I'm never gonna put it in there again. So there's no stand back, I'm arming the nugget. It's more like, come forwards, I'm arming the nugget. Come on, let's get a good look. This is one we're excited about. Very low battery, you don't say. <laughs> It'd be interesting if it actually holds a charge after this as well. Oi, mate. Like. I know you've been in like a comatose state of nothingness for like 15 years, but like you're meant to be a top tier nuggo, mate, and I'm not getting the top tier experience. What was that? What was that? Did you just boot loop on me? I know I could put a new bat in it, but I like that it hasn't been opened. Like there's, there's no scratches or nothing. I'm pretty good at opening these, but it, I usually leave a little bit of a mark. All right, give it up. Radio. so yeah, there's not enough juice to get it going over the USB. I kind of figured this, but it's okay, I've got the secret weapon. This is a Firewire cable. Yeah, that's why I've got a little green whatever on it so I know. But this supplies way more juice. I've seen it wake up dead pods. I've seen it wake up iPods without a battery even in it. Clear! Do it! Yeah! Do it! <laughs> Boom! Yum, 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 Oh no, I forgot. <laughs> oh no, I forgot. I, I'm sorry. English for now. Just I forgot this model can only charge over Firewire. Not tra uh oh, it's just getting hard now. All right. Well, the only thing I can think to do is to <laughs> is to try and let it charge for a little bit, and we're gonna have to do an F1 style like <laughs> pit change, and to see if we can get it onto the USB without it turning off. I'm gonna let this juice up for a quick minute. Oh look, it's a liar. It says charge. All right, in the past I've always said Lewis Hamilton, mate, but I gotta actually get my Aussie roots in check, mate. We're doing an F1 style pit stop. It's Danny Ricardo. Three, two, one. Danny Ricardo, Danny Ricardo, Danny Ricardo. Oh, I do have a spare battery for one of these like in storage, but it's saved for another thing I got. I didn't want to put a bat in this. Do I have an old battery hanging around here? What, what do I even keep in this set piece? A, a, a micro drive, um, the, the worst orcs thing I've ever seen. What about in this one? Oh wow, a Raycon. <laughs> Uh, I, per the dark, a perfectly usable drive. I mean, it's manual, this one you gotta spin yourself. A, a screen, a dollar! Oh, this day isn't so bad after all. And five cents. Literally, I had to drive all the way home to grab this thing. I mean, it is nice to see. <laughs> 
you see the where, mate? I found it at Cashies. Um, yeah, which I think is about how much I paid for this brand new one. So, I'm sorry, this is all my fault. <laughs> the battery in this worked for a few seconds, which is a few seconds more than this one. So, let's rob it. Look at this, it's like the old days, guys. There's our enemy. Give me the treasures. Uh-huh. Yeah. Great, now I have to open up a brand new iPod. Well, I've already scratched it anyway, so... Yeah, Geronimo. Good. Yes. Good. Ah, oh, see? Look at, look at the marks I've left! Don't fight me! Yes. Good. Oh, I can just pull on it, who cares, this battery- Oh, okay. Oh, well, this battery really is cooked now. Gosh, this is glued down hard. Ugh, stupid crap. Okay, okay, this is for realsies. USB, come on! This video is going terrible. <laughs> Alright, hang on, hang on. I think we could do a Danny Ricardo if we. Alright, let's get the firewire in there. So we, we juice her up. Alright, alright. This should work. <laughs> This is meant to be a fun, easy video. Three, two, one. Dan Ricardo! Dan Ricardo! Dan Ricardo! Ooh, we've done it! Go, you nugget! Show it! Yeah, co come on! Come on, it should say brand new iPod. It, sh it should say brand new iPod. Uh, oh! <gasps> And we're done! Stick it up ya! I don't care anymore! I don't care anymore! G give me that bat back! Okay. I'm gonna put the battery back in this! Right, we're gonna Danny Ricardo the, the Cashies pod. This has worked so well already. Three, two, one, who cares? Danny, 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 Danny! If this works. <laughs> if the if the Cashies one works. Oh! <laughs> And Carly's iPod works! Oh wow, Carly listens to some really catchy music. 201005111142634. What is that? It's got kids learning on it. The things you could get from Cashies. Well, you know, it's a sad day when the Cashies pot out does a brand new one. I uh, will. I I've really tried, guys. I have to pack up, go home, find that iPod, and, and that shows that that battery does work and now has marks on it from me getting into it. Oh my boxer. Well, the original cable was good. Suppose I should have a quick smell of the original buds. Come here, Diablo. Oh my boxer, why are you doing this? They're just okay. They're like, for free? I mean, they're not free. You paid for them. That's the thing. If it's in the box, you paid for it. End of it. But, you know, they're better than bootlegs, but not that much better. Do we blow them up out of spite? Do we blow them up because I'm upset at this iPod? Oh, yeah! <laughs> Whoa, man! They smell like a new apple thing. It's just breathing out that air. It's better than the farts and egg smell that the bootlegs make. <laughs> Those were the rattliest I've ever heard. I can't remember the last time I actually had a go at some genuine apple headphones like this, but wow. <laughs> you pay a lot, but you get a lot. They are boiling hot even through the gloves. I mean, it was fun trying out a, a domestic Chinese one. Got, got a nice sleeve. And all this waste. Sorry I couldn't get anything planned on this thing. At the minimum, it gives people a bit of an expectation of what to expect if you actually do buy an absolutely brand new iPod like this. And you know, like, you, you get better results at Cashies, where you can find your dreams. Well, that's it. <laughs> thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here, because my Wonder All Month, I directed videos, you know, 
It's what I do for you because you make this whole mess work. You know, get rid of the mid-roll ads and get rid of sponsor spots. And because I care for you so much, why not let's just, let's just keep the disappointment rolling, guys? So I've just ranted and rambled about how you know, batteries just die, even top-end stuff, and you're left with a big heap of crap. Just for you guys, we're gonna keep the train going. A brand new iPod Nano. Look at that, mate. She's still got her seal. So yeah, thanks much, mate. I'll see you all next time. Hey, Frank, the face you're making is actually haunting. It's actually the big scary, Frank. You look horrifying. But you're very happy because you're eating your fatty. Hey, it's the After Show. Thanks so much for supporting me. You guys make this whole thing work. You're the best. Why am I still wearing the fancy gloves? Well, because we're opening up a brand new Nano. So in the main video, we checked out the brand new iPod. Couldn't get a single thing working on it. That bat was cack. I bet this is going to be exactly the same. I think these are one of the best looking nanos. I love it. It's just like the mini with that wraparound aluminium style. Although it does make these just about impossible to service to change the bats in. Because if it expands, you're never getting it out. But um, yeah, I bought this two and a half years ago. You know, when I saw that, I was ruining the price of iPods. Sorry. <laughs> I, I made sure to snatch up some new ones before they cost billions. Oh, my brand new nug. We hope that you will work. Wow, man, this, ah! Ooh, ooh, this is exciting. So we'll get to the nugget in a bit. It's lost a lot of its apple smell, but that's okay. Yeah, no, no. Uh -huh, this is the same old buds, same old duck, and another cable guy. Man, I forget how just lovely and white these are. So in the main video, we already had a smell of these. Wow, did they get rattly. And you know, I do have one of these brand new cables hanging around. I'm gonna leave these sealed just cause I don't need to open them. And like, I don't need the rubbish blown around anyways. Tiny Apple stickers. Let's have a look at the manual. Even back then, Apple were making the best little like manual whatevers just to get, look at this. Gives you like the quick go around of how to use it. I mean, I think the reason why the instructions can be so simple is because the UI doesn't suck and like the controls are genius. Like we really do take the click wheel for granted. Um, yeah, this is how you do it. Even to this very day, most companies don't know how to make a half decent manual, right? You got, you got to bend it to get it out or something like that. Bend it. Yeah, there we go. All right, all right. Whoa, man. It's so cool to see a brand spanking one of these. Oh, that's not yellow and full of like pocket juice. Not a lick of poo there either. Okay, we are arming the nugget and I expect nothing. I expect nothing. It's typical, typical of these new things. Come on, Bubby. Come on, I just want Scarlet Fire and a picture of Bitey Frank. Like, that's, that's it. <gasps> Wah! Yes! <laughs> Finally! Better come up as a brand new pod. A brand new pod. Yeah? You, you, you doing it? Uh-oh. Don't you boot loop on me. Oh. <laughs> And it was two and a half years ago when I first bought these and I'm like, man, this is going to be the ultimate iPod experience. Brand new ones. No, no poo stains on them and they're going to turn on and work beautifully. How nice. <gasps> oh, welcome to your brand new iPod. Yeah, look. No, no. Oh, turns out this idiot can't look at JPEGs. Are you serious? Sync photos from... I don't even know what... Fine, sync it. I don't care. Just put anything on it. Sync music, selected artists, albums, YouTube music? Gosh, I hope it's in there. <laughs> There's no Scarlet Fire. I'm going to be so mad. All right, hopefully I can eject it and then just keep using it on the charger here. Yeah! Oh, man, you forget how good the screens are on these. Oh, that is so satisfying. <laughs> iPods have, like, kind of come back because they've never stopped being good. Like, you know, preferences have changed as to how we listen to music, but these guys are doing their job just as they always have. What, what's on here? Yay! Oh, look, um, there's a potato that I found that looks just like a penis. And look, that's baby Frank. That's baby Frank, and there's a fly on her head, but you can't see. But yeah, she was a little babe. And hey! Bitey Frank. Me happy. And that's the first time Frank went outside. The grass was heaps long. She did like a big periscope and she sat there for about half an hour. And, and more Frank. Has it got the, the Gomez? It's 
got break. <laughs> of course it's got break. Man, I played so much of this waiting to be picked up from school while listening to System of a Down and Muse. <laughs> Exxon! <laughs> oh, everything, everything's lining up in the after show, hey? Like, this turned on fine! Power on. Bluetooth mode. <sighs> Auxiliary mode. It's time I'm keen for it. Here we go. Plugging in the nugget. Look, I even got a matching white cable. Shut up! Whatever. Bluetooth mode. Shut up. Should be more gentle. I'm trying to keep this in good nick. <laughs> but the biggest test, will the bat keep batting? Three, two, one. Uh, get out. The answer is no. I wish it was easier to change the batteries in these, because honestly, four gigs of just music is a lot more than people think. And just how small and crazy light this thing is, a lot of me would love to use one of these again, but I, I don't want to tear this apart. I really can't be bothered. I'll just stick to iPod minis. Well, let's get it back in its tomb. Nice. Ah, that goes back really good. Really cool retail packaging. I actually really like it. It's very small and you can actually see exactly the guy that you're buying. I mean, that is confidence right here when there's no illustrations, there's no like funny graphics to like amp it up. Apple just showed you what it was and people bought them in their droves. Pretty amazing this guy survived all these years without being opened because as I said in the other video, it's just fun opening these. Well, thanks. I I'm glad that worked. <laughs> I'm glad I got Bitey Frank. And, um, you know, look at the pretty one. Great. Look at it. Yee. This has to be one of the most requested things. For the uninitiated, this is Kanye West's stem player. Ooh. It's a strange color. <laughs> it's very strange. And, um, it's very fleshy. Uh, but not crappy. I mean, like, there's you can barely see the seam in the silicon. It's actually made really nice. I heard it's meant to resemble a stress reliever or something. Everything's soft. So, stem play isn't just an edgy name. Like, in music creation, stems are like groups of sounds, like the drums and percussion all together, all the vocalists together. This is important for mastering because making changes to suit one instrument will affect all of them. So, having all the instruments either separate or in groups called stems, you have way more control over the final mix. So the stem player allows you to play with those stems, like, you know, take the drums out, take the bass out. It's got Kanye's music preloaded onto it, which is especially designed for the stem player. But the big kicker with this guy is, you can upload your own music to it. Yeah, just MP3s, drag them on, and boom, you can play with the stems. <laughs> there are caveats as to how well it works and what kind of music works best, but the best way to show you is with a demo. It does have a speaker in it, but as you'd imagine, it's less suck. But mate, at least it's got a headphone jack, man. So I'm just gonna aux us in right into the disc. So I've loaded this guy with some YouTube music, which I'm allowed to play with, and let's have a listen. All right, hold down the dingus guy. Bazinga. <laughs> <laughs> so, vocals, bass, chords and things, and the drums. <laughs> I love when you pause it goes, Ew, and then, Ew. That's a fun little touch, Mr. West. That's cool. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> it's...
<laughs> That's so neat. So it's not perfect. I mean, as you hear, as I drag stuff out, other instruments start to change a little bit. Like, you know, they get grainier. They're not as crisp anymore. I mean, and that's because like, it's using all the different frequencies and trying to chop the instruments out. But for instance, like the ride cymbal and all the top end stuff in the drums is where reverb lives in the top end of the piano, but the piano can go lower than a bass guitar. And so that means the low end of the piano can get into the, the bass part. And before anyone chimes in and goes, oh, you could probably do better on, on software and what, uh, well, honestly, not really. This is about what you can get. I mean, considering that this is just an MP3 that I've dragged on there and it's pulling it apart. Yeah. You lose quality, but It's neat. Just to throw this guy off, I put some other stuff on here. <laughs> Naturally, it's only piano, so <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Good old old timey music. Yeah, piano pieces, of course, there's only one instrument. And um, old timey music, it just smashes it all into one thing. But this isn't all it does, so let's go back to Scarlet Fire. So there's a whole bunch of stuff you can play with on the fly. I mean, like, a lot of Kanye's biggest hits are remixes and all that sort of thing. Check this out. There's extra settings. <laughs> And then you can go backwards. But then the thing is, you can loop sections. I mean, playing with the jazz songs, you can make some pretty avant-garde stuff. Because it's awesome, it actually quantizes the song, like it figures out what the tempo is. So all you do is you just boink and smack at it, and it does it all for you. <laughs> yeah, the, the quality isn't perfect. It's, you know, it's what you'd expect from doing this with music, and like... It's pretty stinking neat. All right, let's talk the details. It's 200 Freedom Eagles, which ain't cheap for a weird skin-colored Yeenug with only eight gig storage. Yes, eight gigs. Where you have to use the website itself to upload music to it. Yeah, no drag and drop. You have to use their website. The site has a vibe. It's like as if Kanye made it himself from his phone, but I actually like it. I mean, no distractions, straight to the point. But annoyingly, you can only use Chrome. Only Chrome. I use Safari because the only time in my life that I've had a virus on my Mac was through Google Chrome. Uh, but you know, 200 bucks for, for a UI, which really is a head mess. It is not intuitive. It took me ages to figure out how to actually get music on and do the do. It really is more like an instrument. I mean, like you get the hang of it and then it's a total piece of cake. But yeah, first go on this guy was confusing. But all you guys asked me to look at this only recently, but the Yeenug has been out for months. It's because Kanye decided to release his latest album, Donda 2, exclusively on the stem player. Naturally, that caused quite a stir. <laughs> and, and it goes two ways, because he did it as a protest against how messed up the recording industry is, how stinking little artists actually get, yet it's their content that's making the money. Kanye turned down a $100 million contract with Apple to put it on his own thing. And look, I was a full-time musician before this channel, and big corporate businesses will treat you like gold right up until they don't need you anymore. Then, poof, they, they really would look at you like, 
who are you again? So uh, yeah, I felt the sting and it's real. And I'm sure he found it very liberating to tell Apple to get to stick it up him. But then on the other side, you have Kanye fans paywalled out of his latest content. And as a content creator myself, like, I know that content can mean the world to people. I've had people message me to say that they didn't commit suicide because they found my content. And you betcha that's heavy stuff and it, it means a lot. Wow. In my lowest points, having something great to watch or listen to has always been a pick me up for me. And so, you know, there are a lot of people who really want to listen to Donda 2, but they're not in a position where they can buy the, the Yenug. And then you have tech enthusiasts saying, ultimately, well, this should just be an app. Why is it a Yenug? But as I said earlier, this is more like an instrument. And I, I gotta tell you, Touch screens don't make fun instruments. We're humans, we like how things feel. And it's nice to have an actual thing in your hand. Yeah, all the tools to, to play with music like this are already out there. But this is all about convenience. You don't have to learn software. You just drag it on and play about. And for most people, that's the experience they want with this. And you know, it really could be the, the bug bite for someone to really get into remixing. And then the next thing could be a DAW and a workstation. Never knock stuff that seems incredibly casual. Cause again, my whole YouTube career began with GarageBand and iMovie on an iPad. The Donda 2 release thing is a thing. You shouldn't be buying this just for Kanye's album. Album. You should be buying this because you're interested in what it does and what I've shown you. It does exactly what it sets out to do and I, th I found it really neat. I actually loved playing with this thing. The Yenug, it's pretty stinking neat. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here because my $1 a month, I directed videos. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I can afford the Yenug thanks to folks like you. So, and mate, if you think this guy's a bit of a weirdo, then you haven't seen the lip tunes. <laughs> mate, it's an MP3 player in the shape of lipstick. So we're gonna have a giggle and a laugh at the, the really crappy looking nuggo. So thanks so much and mate, I'll see you all next time. So like we're looking at Frankie on top of a, of a house. But if we like follow this really smelly road you know, through Frank's villa and she knocked over things. We're still we're still going, Frank's still going. Her, her bum's in this house. Frank, you're occupying two houses. Frank? Frank! Oi! Frank! Hey, it's the after show. Thanks so much for supporting me. You guys make the mess work. You keep the mess coming, and the mess keeps coming because, mate, it's the lip tunes. This is not a toy. Well, then what is it? Well, apparently it's real electronics with style. 256 megabytes, that's how you know it's a stinking nugget. At some point, this was nearly 40 bucks. I didn't pay anywhere near that, trust me. Oh, wow, it's got a backlight. And, and voice record, oh goody. <laughs> I never understood Bratz. It's just like this really catty, whatever. It's just, there it is, looking cromulent. Lipstick shaped removable top. D don't sell that to us like it's a feature. It'd be something if it actually was like lip gloss or something. Oh, look at that lip shaped boom box. It looks hideous. <laughs> Windows 98 driver, how old is this? Look, it comes with one ah! and it's included, man. That's a genuine XL. Ooh, the genuine XL. Oh, uh, uh, stink buds. Ooh, USB extension, that's useful. When we'll get to the nugget in a bit. Sift through the nonsense. Ew, ew, there it is. <laughs> it looks horrible. Everything's lips. Can you believe no one bought any of this crap? <laughs> Two megapixel camera? Oh wow, man! Th look at that telly. You knew you were a spoiled brat. Get it, brat? That man. If you have one of those tellies, you're lucky to have any telly in your room. The lip phone. <laughs> Mate, you can hand off a lot of lip service with that. Get it to punch. Oh, what a charming manual. How it just reeks of design and just <laughs> totally not just copy paste from the engineering department. How to put the bat in? How to? Oh gosh, <laughs> it was all really fun and whimsical right up until the manual. <laughs> all right, here it is. Oh, it says it right there. Lip Tunes MP3 player. Although this looks like the same UI as those every other. <laughs> oh, it's got a screw. <sighs> oh, this for what? The Lip Tunes? Genuine XL better work. Here we go. On. On. Guys, I don't think the Excel's any good. All right, hang on. Try Genuine Boy. 
Yeah, there we go. Brett. The Brett. MP to spot. What? Power on. Bluetooth mode. You always say that. What are you playing? Is this content matched? Is, 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 is this content matched? Am I allowed to... Am I allowed to listen to this? What? Oh, okay, no, no, no. The worst thing about having three music degrees is that you can just hear cliches and it's like they're the most unoriginal sounding things I've ever heard. Well, I gotta, apparently I could get a recording on this. I, I gotta do that. Okay, let's see. Mode. 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 Mo oh, mode. Music. No, music. And then exit. Record! Yes! Like well, this one time, I thought I'd get in touch with my, like, feminine self, mate, and I figured, like, you know, lipstick, it tastes pretty good. I could probably eat about eight, eight tubes, mate. Like, no wonder why women love it so much. And so, like, so I thought I'd buy some, mate, so I can, like, fit in and, like, you know, I'd be super relatable to women. And, like, turns out I bought a stupid MP3 player, mate. I've just been rubbing plastic on my lips this whole time. <laughs> Good. Oh, they actually called it the Bratz MP3. Oh, that's nice. I'm putting Scarlet Fire on there. All right, we've got to put the cap back on. It's important, apparently. Scarlet Fire. Scarlet Fire! Oh. Uh oh, it turned off. <laughs> lip, lip tunes, no. Hey, she's still good. <laughs> Bluetooth mode. Shut up. And I mean, still gonna try these. <laughs> Ooh, gold plated brats are spoiling us. They they sound like the typical headphones. I, I'm gonna do a guess that every single one of these has the exact same headphones with a slightly little different chassis on them or something. Let's hear how noisy they get. <laughs> It smells like strawberries as it burns. <laughs> That's nice. It recognizes a Bratz MP3 play when you plugged it in. You just drag and drop it in. It had a little thing to listen to it on the car ride home. They give you a battery. I mean, these weren't good, but they weren't the worst. I've heard far worse, but they weren't good. Um, you know, in Bill Clip, I mean, apart from looking strange, <laughs> There's nothing really wrong with it. The microphone sounds miserable, but hey, it's neater that it's got one. Um, no, I will not be one greeting this. I will be taking my boy back. Go hide with the others again. I'm sure there are lots of little girls out there who absolutely adored this, and it was super neat, and when you're like eight or nine years old, having giant lipstick put onto your school bag like this was just pretty normal. Well, there's, the thing happened, and you know, look after your ducks.